This story begins with a child lying wrapped in a blanket. Seeing him, the woman asked who it was and whether it was a human cub, looking at the child who was lying right in front of them. The man who looked at the child said that he had very small hands. One day when he grows up, he will teach him how to use a sword. The woman standing next to him said that it was a very sweet child and looking at him she said that one day she would turn him into the greatest healer this world has seen. The old man who stood next to them said that this child would become the strongest magician because he would raise him as his successor, and they all named him Will. The young man and the wolf rushed through the forest and turning to Schultz, the guy asked him. Then he said that he knew everything and that the enemy was on their tail, the wolf answered him. A giant troll was chasing our heroes and, realizing that he was approaching, the guys had to run faster. So turning to Schultz, our hero asked him to distract him. Schultz, agreeing with the young man, ran further than the guy, grabbing a tree, sat down on it. Drawing out his sword, he turned to the green troll, saying that he, who leaves destruction behind him and cripples animals, will not easily leave him. Jumping from a tree onto a troll, our hero wounded him in the back with his small knife. Then, looking at the troll that was right in front of him, our hero did not understand why he was still alive and attacked him with his sword again. Speaking of which, the troll had to come to an end. The next moment our hero cut off his head. Schultz was next to our hero at that moment and observed what was happening. Having fallen from the troll, our hero sat on the ground and then the animals, right in front of him, surrounded the young man. While curing one of them, our hero said that now the animal was fine, and he jumped to our hero and kissed him on the cheek. Then the young man understood that it was his gratitude and said that he was always happy to help the animal. Then Schultz called our hero, seeing him, the young man looked at his friend. Then he turned to the guy and asked if they had time to rest, because today was the day of the water flow. Did the young man really think that he could skip sword practice? Hearing this, the young man realized that he had forgotten about it and, running away from the animals, said that they had to leave. The animals waved to our hero, wishing him good luck. Running away with his friend the wolf, our hero jumped through the river and ran next to his friend. Then he said that the young man could jump on him so that they could run even faster. Jumping onto the wolf, our hero smiled at his friend. Once upon a time, the young man was an orphan. He was abandoned because of the outbreak of war or because of the onset of famine. The young man did not know exactly the reason. A child sailing in a small boat and picked up by some wanderer to the place where he was taken. The place where those who would become his father, mother, teacher were located. He was taken to where the destinies of the gods of this world were intertwined. The people who picked up the child were gods. One of them was the sword god Ronan, the girl was the goddess of health Maria, and the god of magic Wendell. And the one who picked him up is a god with thousands of incarnations, the god of omnipotence Ruse. Looking at the mountain that was in front of him, it was a table mountain on which the gods themselves live. Hail to our hero, who was riding close on his wolf, everyone greeted him, saying that the young man had finally returned. Seeing them, the young man was very happy, because he was raised by the gods who were looking directly at him at that moment. Looking at the guy Will, Ronan thought that the young man was late and asked where he had been. Then the magician told Ronan what he wanted from the young man, because they knew about the green troll, and the goddess who was next to them looked at her little Will and asked if he was okay. The next moment she rushed to the young man and hugged him. Then our hero said that he had defeated him and the girl thanked the young man, saying that what should have been expected from her will. Ronan was unhappy and asked why the young man went without saying anything, and who taught him this. And turning to Will, Ronan asked him to get ready, because today they would begin to practice, to which, having heard this, the goddess noted that there was no way they could do this, because the young man had just returned from a dangerous journey. Maria therefore suggested that we start treating Will today. The next moment, Ronan was telling the girl not to joke with him, because today it was his turn to teach the young man. Then the magician also came up and asked Will if he wanted to study history with him. Ronan, hearing this, told the old man not to even think about it. The next moment, all three were fighting for the attention of our hero, and he only looked at Ronan and remained silent and did not say anything. Looking at the blade that hung from the young man, the Ronan cheated and told Will that he had a blade that the young man had wanted for a long time and he could give it to our hero today in training. Hearing this, the young man was very happy and asked if it was true, then he would practice with his father. Seeing everyone else that Ronan was able to capture the boy's attention, the goddess and the magician were very angry. The next moment, our hero went to train with his father. In pointing to a large stump behind him, Ronan said that today they would chop this stump with a sword. If the young man could do this, he would receive a blade. Also, Ronan, addressing our hero, said that he would show the young man how it was done and, moving forward from him, 
He came out and pulled out his blade, wanting to attack the stump that was right in front of him. Swinging with all his might, the man attacked the stump and looking at this, the young man saw how the stump was cut with just one blow. Then Ronan turned to Will and said that this was all that was needed. He said that he expected nothing less from his father. Turning to Will, Ronan said that now it was his son's turn and, taking his sword, our hero began to swing it, showing whether it was correct. Looking at Will, Ronan said that such blows would not break the twig, did the guy know this? Then looking at the young man, Ronan thought to himself that maybe it was too early for the young man. Will, looking at the tree in front of him and at the sword, thought about how he couldn't grab it and tried to understand how his father did it. The young man said to himself that he had to imagine that this blade was a continuation of him, right to the tip. So grabbing it, the young man attacked the stump right in front of him. Seeing the power that our hero possessed, all three of his mentors were very surprised. Turning to his father, Will asked how he felt about the attack. Then he saw this and said that it was very good and that he would give the blade to the young man. Having received the blade, our hero was very happy. Turning to Schultz, his friend, who was lying near the tree and watching this scene, he boasted about his new blade. Ronan, watching what happened, bent down to the ground, picking up the wood chips and looking at them, which were right in front of him. Ronan thought that he told the young man to cut this stump that was right in front of him. But Will did not just cut him, he simply destroyed this stump into pieces. At that moment, Will was playing with Schultz nearby, and his father was thinking about what an interesting boy was in front of him. Wendell, who was watching them from the side, was very confused by what happened, and the goddess, noticing this, asked what was wrong with Wendell and what confused the old man so much. Wendell, looking at Will, asked him why not give the young man something. Hearing that the magician wanted to give him something, our hero became very interested. Then the magician told Will that it was time to start teaching him magic and how about the Book of Dragon Breath, to which the young man replied that he had already completely learned it. Looking at our hero, the magician was very surprised how the young man could already learn this book, written in an ancient magical dialect. They asked Will if this was so, he, looking at the old man, answered that it was true. Will said that he could communicate fluently in dialect, so he could use any spells from this book. Looking at Will, Wendell could not believe it, saying that he did not believe the young man. Then our hero said what he would show, and using a firestorm, the young man showed Wendell what he could do. Seeing this, the magician understood that there really was a firestorm in front of them. Looking at the magician, the young man asked if this was not so. Then the goddess friend heard the animal whisper something in her ear, then turning to the animal, she asked if it was true, because the baby told her that Will had cured the animals in the forest. The goddess reported that the animal said that it was Will's color magic, which was incredible. Hugging our hero, the girl said that this was to be expected from her little cute Will. The young man did not expect such an attack of feelings at all. Ronan, turning to the girl, said that she would strangle him, and the magician only looked at this from the side and did not answer anything. Turning to Ronan, Will asked if he could show the animals his new dagger. Hearing that the young man was asking, Ronan said that our hero, of course, could do this, and while running away the young man sat on his tailed friend, saying that he had left. The animals only looked after him, as did the gods, whom Ruse had joined. As they believed, Will was growing, and he exceeded all their expectations, said Ronan and the goddess Maria. The animals who constantly walked with them believed and said that this little child had grown very much. They recalled the time they had to raise a human child, saying that they would not waste their time on such a troublesome task. Then Mary, stretching out her hands to the child, said that one could only look at him, because he was a very cute little child, and pressing the child to her heart, the goddess said that he was soft like a marshmallow. Watching this, Ronan asked Wendell to say something. Then the magician said that he did not like small children, explaining that they were noisy and greedy. Then the goddess told them to look into the forest, because timid animals had gathered from all over the forest to look at this child. This child was the sweetest child in the world, the goddess said, and that he himself would be the greatest healer. Then, turning to her, Ronan asked if this child could really be like that, because he had very small hands and stretching out his hand to the small child. The Ronan said, at that moment our hero grabbed his finger, realizing that the young man's grip was right under the sword and very strong. At this moment, Ronan said that he had made his choice, because one day the boy would grow up and he would teach him the art of the sword and the god of swords would make him his student. Then the goddess told Ronan to slow down, because she had already said that the young man would be a healer. Ronan did not understand what would be bad if he also taught the child and asked the girl not to be greedy. In addition, the goddess asked that Ronan not yet play with this barbaric thing in front of this child, talking about the sword that Ronan was holding in his hands. The next moment they called Wendell to settle their dispute. 
who stood nearby and did not participate in the conversation. Then asking Wendell, the goddess asked for advice whether this child would be a doctor or a swordsman, whichever suited him best. Wendell didn't understand why he had to worry about such trifles, but that friend looked into the child's eyes. Wendell beamed, saying that this child was very smart, maybe he should teach him magic. Looking at the old man, both Ronan and the goddess did not understand what impudence he had. Then suddenly another god came, talking about how they should all calm down and why they were all fixated only on their opinions. If this continues, God warned them that he would take the child and send him to another world, he said. Turning to Ruse, they asked what he asked for. The main thing in a man is strength. He will need to learn to use a sword to defend himself. A kind heart was also very important. The ability to heal would be his support in life. And knowledge is what will save a child. Because Wendall was ready to bet that knowledge about the world around him would bring joy to the child. Listen to all this, Ruse said that all three would teach him together. And so they began to teach the child one by one. Looking at what they did, using the sword, healing, magic, they could give him the best education. Standing around the baby, the guys said, the child just extended his hands to all three and smiled. Everyone thought about their own. Because one day, Ronan thought that the young man would become the best swordsman under heaven. The goddess thought that she would make him a saint of her temple of animal healers. And Wendall was already thinking that the young man would become his successor as the strongest magician. Watching all this from the side, Ruse did not understand whether what he had planned would work. Turning to Ruse, Ronan said that they decided that the three of them would give this child. Then what about Ruse? Ruse said that when he found this child, he felt a revelation. The day will come when the child leaves, then the teachers will become only his pawns. Now they had to let the child live without any restrictions, raise him with a free soul, as best as they could do it. This was the task of the three gods and Ruse, who found the child. Will, sitting at that moment on the edge of the cliff, looked at the vast forest. Schultz lay next to him, telling Will that he often looks at the surroundings of this mountain. Then Schultz asked what was beyond it, whether it interested our hero. Will said that his father told him that while the world was full of temptations, enemies and the young man could not go there, but one day his time would come to go down the mountain. To do this was his destiny. This is why Will said that this is why now his mom and dad taught him to become a great healer, swordsman, and magician. At this moment, Schultz, seeing the expression on the young man's face, asked if there was something wrong. Then Will thought about it and asked Schultz, the one who is both a swordsman, a magician and a healer, as Schultz would call him. Schultz explained that a swordsman who heals is a holy swordsman, a swordsman who wields magic, a swordsman who is a sorcerer. The next moment he asked how it was about the hero. The young man explained that it certainly sounded very cool, but he could not call himself that, because he had heard from Father Wendell that when heroes are born, they have a mark on their body. Will, once looked all over himself and he never found any mark. At this point, Schultz asked who worries about such trifles. Schultz explained that his father once told him that a true hero is one who puts himself in danger to keep others safe. If this is so, then the young man was a hero, Schultz said to Will. Listen to Schultz. The young man was very surprised that his friend called him a hero, and Schultz told the young man that the young man was already a hero for them, for the inhabitants of the mountain. Smiling, Will said that this was probably so, so getting up from his place, the young man shouted that he was the hero of this mountain. Hero of the mountain of the gods, wasn't it wonderful? Everyone thought the same about Will. While they were watching, the goddess said that she was preparing dinner for his dear Will today. Ronan, trying to stop her, said that he should have done it, and she should have sat quietly, because she didn't know how to cook. Seven years later, Will was sitting on a tree, enjoying himself, then at that moment the goddess was trying to understand where he had gone. Then friend Will felt that his mother was calling him, and now he had to go. Turning to the bird that brought this news, therefore jumping from the tree on which he was sitting, our hero headed home. It was Will, who was 14 years old, this was the age of descent. The girl who sat and prayed, her prayer brought to the great goddess Mother Earth brought a prophecy in return. The maid who ran to Lady Lunamaria asked where the girl was going, to which she said that she had received a prophecy from the great mother. Hearing this, the girl could not believe what Maria said. Maria reported that she would go to the mountain of the gods, where the great hero was located. Grabbing at this moment, our hero showed his skill, collecting apples and biting off one of them, thinking how tasty it was. His faithful friend Schultz was sitting next to him, and turning to him, the young man offered his friend to try the apple that he was holding out to him from his hand. After chewing the apple, Schultz thanked our hero, who asked if it was tasty. His friend Schultz reported that of course this was so. They both sat in the forest and the young man, looking at the trees, thought that the wind was so pleasant that day. 
and Schultz said that this was really so, he also felt it. Addressing Will, Schultz said that human cubs grow up very quickly. Just recently the guy was so small and grew so much in such a short period. Hearing this from Schultz, the young man was very surprised. Then he asked if our hero was leaving. The young man explained to his friend that the time had come, because Father Ruse had told him that in the end he would come down from the mountain and become a savior, savior of the world. The world really needs a person like our hero, Schultz said, looking at the young man. Then he, sitting on a stone, thought that it was a pity that after he left there would be no one to guard the animals here. Trying to cozy up to Will, Schultz talked about how impudently the young man spoke and that he didn't have to worry. There were many worthy warriors on this mountain, and if something happened they could ask the gods for help. Looking at Schultz, our hero believed that he was still the strongest wolf and the bear Cotty was also quite strong. Then Schultz said that he really wanted to go with our hero. But the young man explained to Schultz that he could not do this, because he asked what would happen to Weist. After all, the two of them were supposed to get married soon. Hearing what Will said, Schultz couldn't believe his ears. Who would marry a tomboy like this Weiss asked. To which the young man thought that they looked great together. Descending from the rock on which Will was sitting, he turned to Schultz, saying that he thanked Schultz for everything. But Schultz asked him not to talk like that anymore, as if they would never meet, because this was his home and he was always expected here. Hugging his friend, our hero said that this really was so and said that they could go home and take these delicious apples with them, because our hero wanted his father to try them. Then suddenly Schultz smelled someone and said that it smelled like someone had passed here. Our hero realized that it was a man, but this mountain was for the gods and entry was prohibited for mortals. The next moment, our hero, using his power, felt that there were several people here, judging by the smell or sound of metal, and it seemed that men in armor were chasing the girl. Will whistled to his friend and the bird that sat on his finger obeyed Will who asked her to tell all this to his parents. Then the bird obeyed our hero, who wanted to ask her for something in releasing the bird into the sky. Our hero said that it was necessary to save this girl who was in trouble. Addressing Schultz, the young man said that any of them could be in trouble. Whether the wolf knew about this, he said that it was difficult to say for sure, because her heartbeat was too gentle for this and besides. Whoever was pursuing this girl, they were probably villains. Looking at the guy, Schultz asked our hero. He, looking at his friend, said that this was probably so. The girl ran through the forest, and the men who ran after her tried to stop her, throwing their daggers at her. Hitting a tree with one of them, the man stopped the girl and said that she had nowhere else to run, and then she had to say goodbye to her life. Stopping, the girl began to talk to her pursuers. Turning to her offenders, the girl said that her body and life belonged to the gods, but not to barbarians like them, and asked who convinced them to do this. Then one of the men said that she would not receive a word in response. Did the girl really want to know so badly? How about we go and ask the mother of God in the next world? The men said while attacking the girl. Dodging their attacks, they realized that the woman was very impudent and one of them shouted for the guys to surround her, because she was alone and it was necessary to end this right now. The next moment, one of the swordsmen was attacking the girl, but then our hero suddenly appeared, who saved the lady and was ready to attack his offenders. Turning to the girl, the young man asked if she was okay, and she was very surprised that the young man saved her. Then the swordsmen who were right in front of them carefully observed what was happening, saying that there was a stupid fat wolf and a child here. They wanted to attack our heroes, asking what the young man was doing here, looking at his back. The young man, looking at the offenders, thought to himself that he wanted to ask them what they were doing here, because this place was very far from the villages. Then, looking at the guy, the knight said that a very large lion had gathered here, and they would simply kill him along with the priestess. Turning to Schultz, Will said that in the end everything was as they said, that it could be more evil than these guys and that it seemed that he was right, they didn't need to hold back. Turning to the goddess, the young man said that now he would save her and asked if everything was fine. Looking at Will, she addressed him as Lord Hero. The young man was very surprised that she called him a hero and that the girl was wearing a mask, looking at her face. The next moment, he addressed his offenders, saying that it was the mountain of the gods, a holy place where entry was prohibited. And turning to the people, he said that he would let them go if they decided to run away right now. Of course, people did not listen to our hero and rushed at him with their swords, saying that it was necessary to kill him and the wolf next to him. Our hero just sighed sadly and told Schultz to attack with him. The next moment, the young man thought that he would try to cut through, 
but for such heavy armor as this, it was necessary to use other blows. Attacking their offenders, they were very angry with the young man and then rushed at him altogether. The next moment, our hero disappeared under their swords and then, looking at the place where the young man had recently sat, people did not understand where he had disappeared to. But our hero was already on top of them and attacked his offenders directly from the sky. Schultz also dealt with the knights and said that he was finished. The next moment, our heroes, having fought with several knights, dealt with them and saved the beautiful lady. Approaching the goddess, our hero asked if the girl was hurt. Lunamaria explained that everything was fine and thanked our hero, because he was magnificent. Turning to the Lord Hero, the girl said. Hearing this, the young man was very embarrassed, because he saw a human woman for the first time in his life. Turning to her, he asked what Lord Hero meant, which she kept calling him all the time. Then, apologizing, the girl said that she was a follower of the Great Mother of the Gods and she apologized for entering the sacred territory, for not being able to stop the bandits who were pursuing her. Addressing Will, the girl introduced herself as the blind priestess Lunamaria. Hearing this, the young man talked about the goddess of the Mother of the Earth. If he remembered correctly, then she was an ancient goddess who brought fertility to these lands because Wendell taught him this once. The priestess's vision was sealed so that she would grow up unaffected by any evil thoughts. Our hero was very embarrassed, and the girl said that the young man was very smart, turning to the Lord Hero and saying that her goal was to meet with the young man brought up by the bugs of this mountain, that is, with our Lord Hero. Having heard, the young man was very surprised that he was raised by the gods themselves and then, the young man said that he thought that the girl was mistaken because he did not have the mark of a hero. Hearing that there was no mark, the girl was surprised. Then our hero said that he was just a man raised by the gods. But the girl said that then there could be no mistake because it was him, as the great mother said. A savior who can bring harmony between good and evil, such power belongs to the one she met. A disciple of the gods, now she was confident and would rely on the prediction she received. Turning to our hero and pointing to the knights who were lying on the ground, defeated, she explained that these people did not want them to meet. Most likely they were hired by heretics. Then Schultz sensed something and told Will to be careful, because he sensed someone else nearby. Looking at our hero, the girl was very surprised that the young man could communicate with animals. But looking at Schultz in front of him, our hero said that this was so, because this was his dear partner. The next moment, he asked the girl to step aside and be careful, because it seemed that the strangers were still somewhere here. Looking into the forest, our hero saw a gang that was approaching straight towards them. Then one of them said that these knights were the ones that had been overthrown. They still haven't killed the girl yet. Then someone said that this guy and his wolf had disturbed them and that they had to be very careful. The man who stood at the head of this entire gang said that he would kill them very carefully. Addressing the lord to the hero, the girl said that he should not lose his vigilance, because this man had a magical weapon. Hearing about the magical weapon, the young man was very surprised and asked Lunumeria to stay behind him. The girl said that if she followed him, then protecting her from such an enemy was not necessary. The young man explained that she was mistaken here, because the problem was not his strength. The point was that it seemed that soon everything here would turn red. Hearing about this, Lunamaria asked if the young man really wanted to use fire magic. But our hero explained that it was not he who would use it, because these guys looked like they brought problems with them. Then suddenly a giant dragon descended to the ground. Looking at the dragon that landed right in the middle of the square where the knights and our heroes stood, everyone did not understand what this thing was doing here. In front of everyone was a red level dragon. When everyone saw the dragon, they were very surprised and asked why he came here. Our hero was also shocked by the appearance of a dragon in front of him. Lunamaria asked if it was a dragon, because it was very huge. Then the young man was very surprised that a girl could really notice such things while being blind. Lunamaria replied that it was so, wings that can shake the air in its furious roar, but most importantly, the girl felt the incredible vitality that pulsates in it. Apparently, after a group of knights followed them, there were no dragons as such left on this mountain. There were a lot of strays left around her. They must have stumbled upon the dragon's nest on the way here and destroyed everything there to pieces. Then our hero did not understand what they had to do if they did not kill the priest. The contract would be cancelled, so everyone shouted that they had to get ready because now they would drive the dragon away from here. All the while, everyone aimed arrows and shot at the dragon, but it was useless because its scales were too hard and all the arrows simply flew off from these scales. The next moment, one of the knights who was the commander, drawing his weapon, asked what was about the magical weapon, trying to defeat the dragon. 
But after hitting him, the dragon didn't care, even the magic weapon didn't take him. So all the soldiers said that they had to leave here, otherwise at this rate they would become this dragon's dinner. Our hero, noticing the flames that the dragon was spewing out of himself, realized that Lunamaria had to stay in place and he too, otherwise they could fall under this flame. The next moment, the dragon tried to incinerate the knights who were running away from him. Our hero saved two knights, then looking at him, the commander asked what it all meant. Will replied that if he continued to allow everyone to fight the dragon, he would turn the forest to ashes with his flames. Considering that, by the way, even people like them have families who will mourn the death. Seeing this, Lunamaria was surprised how noble the young man was and saved his opponents. Approaching the dragon, our hero told him to attack him, because he was his opponent. At this moment, the soldiers helped the two wounded people who were saved by the young man, asking if they were okay. And the commander tried to understand what the child could do against the dragon. Lunamaria tried to run after the young man and warn him. Then turning to her, the guy told her not to worry, because he had something special in his arsenal for this dragon. Taking out his sword, the young man was ready to fight with him, and the dragon, seeing this, became enraged and wanted to attack our hero. His power was so great that the knights and everyone who stood nearby were shocked by such pressure. Our hero, taking out the sword that his father gave him, decided to use the technique of his father Ronan, a powerful sword art that can turn an ordinary knife into a deadly weapon. Wendall's father's magic that would turn a stick into a sword if he fused them into a new dagger. Ice, regrets, the cold wind of emptiness, remaining silent, and at that moment the hero ordered the sword to freeze everything here. The dragon that began to spew out its flame, suddenly everyone saw that it was no longer a flame and that it had simply frozen. The next moment, our hero cut the dragon in half and froze it with his magic. Everyone, seeing this, was shocked by the strength of the young man and Lunamaria, who was watching him, also could not believe it. People looked at this huge dragon, which simply turned into an ice cube. Our hero stood nearby and everyone tried to figure out who he was. Thinking that our hero was a monster, they realized that they had to retreat. The next moment, Lunamaria approached Mr. Hero, took off her mask and looked at him with her beautiful eyes. The girl asked to be allowed to introduce herself again because she was a blind priestess of the earth belonging to the mother goddess and asked if the young man could tell her his name. Seeing a beautiful girl, the hero said that his name was Will, he was a man, but his parents were gods, and they all sat down together and began to talk. Our hero asked if the girl was sure that she was talking about him, because he had already told her that he did not have a hero's mark. Maria reported that this was so, because she had information about the young man from the oracle. In the end, the young man who lives on this mountain is the hero who will bring peace to this land. Moreover, the girl said that she could not see, so she could not determine in any way whether the young man had a mark or not. Looking at her, the young man was very embarrassed and understood that she could not see, but he had a feeling that his apology here would look rather rude. The girl said that, of course, she voluntarily offered her eyes to the goddess and she did not regret becoming a priestess. Then our hero asked if this was so putting his hands behind his back and leaning on his wolf. At this moment, the girl said that the young man just put his hands behind his neck, was that so? To which the surprised hero asked how she knew. Maria explained that when you lose your sight, your sense of hearing, smell, touch and intuition improve. What she did now was simply listen to the sound of the air flow around her changing. At that moment, our hero understood how she was able to send those guys who were flying ironically. Seeing this, the girl realized that it turned out that the young man was watching this. And at that moment I was very embarrassed. The next moment, while addressing Lord Will, she said that she had been educated in many aspects from an early age. Maria also reported that things related to normal life, of course, but she would not become an obstacle in a live battle and asked if our hero would like to go on a journey with her to save the world. Having heard about the trip, our hero said that he planned to leave soon. If this is true, then this meeting was truly the work of fate. Schultz, listening to their conversation, asked if our hero thought that the gods would allow him to leave so easily. The young man understood that this was true. Just then they asked him if something was bothering him and he said that yes, he did not deny and he thought that his father would allow him. But the rest, however, the young man could not imagine how they would react. On the other hand, the young man said that there was a god who agreed with them, so they could simply rely on him. The girl said that we had to go together and meet his family of gods. The young man answered her that he didn't mind. But the girl said that as a subordinate, she would receive permission to leave the mountain. And the girl counted on his guidance in their residence. So the young man agreed with her and said that they could leave. The next moment she wanted to put on her mask. But then looking at the young man, she asked what was wrong, because his facial expression and he wanted to say something. 
the young man said that the girl really wanted to put her mask back on. The young man explained to her that her eyes looked so beautiful, he just thought it might be meaningless. Then smiling at him, she was very surprised by what was said and said that she would take this into account. The next moment I asked Willa from the girl if it was normal, and the girl said that it was okay for her if Will thought so. Our hero, looking at Maria, understood that every time she smiled, his heart skipped a beat. Because unlike Maria's mother, this girl was quite close to his age and he understood that he was not used to this. Schultz, who had been walking next to them all this time, noticed that our hero's face was red, but he said that nothing happened. Extending his hand to Luna Maria, our hero invited her to go together. Taking his hand, Maria agreed. A young man suggested that she go to where his godparents were. At that moment, the bird that Will sent flew to our hero's parents and they heard that Will would bring a human girl here. Hearing this, his mother did not understand how the girl had the impudence to approach her sweet Will, because she very well wanted to know how good the girl really was. The enraged mother was thinking about this. At that moment Wendell and Ronan were just standing nearby, watching the goddess's reaction. Arriving at the temple, our hero said that they were there. In front of them was the palace of the gods and the girl, looking at this, understood that there would finally be a meeting with Will's parents. She talked about how wonderful this holy land was and understood what it meant where the young man lived. Our hero explained that normally they would stay in a house on the hillside, but they, the gods, have an image to maintain, which is why they receive help from animals. All our hero's parents watched intently and waited for the young man and girl to enter. Sitting down at the table, they watched the views and realized what a stunning divine power was in front of them, and at that moment Lunamaria realized that they had raised Lord Will. Our hero, looking at her reaction, apologized to the girl for such a reception, to which the girl said that it was not worth an apology, because she was the one who burst in without preemption. Ronan turned to the girl who served the mother goddess, placing her feet on the table and asking why she was going to seduce Will. Hearing this, Will said that this was not the case, turning to Father Ronan. The girl explained that she could offer her body to the goddess of her mother and did not understand why Ronan thought of her that way. Luna Maria explained that one of her ultimate goals was to serve Lord Will, to which his mother said that she would never give her will to that girl. After all, she had no idea what tactics the girl used, but she would not allow her to do this, so she asked her to fail immediately. Ronan understood that they were plunging into a conflict between the daughter-in-law and the mother-in-law. Upon hearing about the daughter-in-law, the girl was very embarrassed and so was our hero. Then the young man turned to Father Ronan, asking what he was talking about. The next moment, Father Ronan asked if our hero had even kissed her, to which both young men were surprised what kind of kiss they were talking about. Listening to all this, the young man was very embarrassed and looked at the girl. Then she said that if Lord Will wanted this, she would agree. The young man tried to imagine himself with Luna Maria, but at that moment, when he had already imagined everything that was possible, his mother said that she would not allow it and asked him not to dare joke like that. She then explained that she would never accept something like that. Ronan said he couldn't blame Will for wanting a young girl, but definitely not an old hag who dressed like a goddess. Turning to Wendell, he told him that he wondered if they would soon be able to support their grandchildren. At this moment, the goddess did not understand whose side Ronan was on, because she would tear out all his nails, to which he, laughing at the girl, said that he was very scared. Wendell also didn't understand whether she was going to be hysterical about this. Then, turning to the guy, everyone said that they should give him a rest. Turning to Ronan, Wendell said that this did not concern them. Luna Maria felt a divine presence. Turning to Lord Will, she asked who it was. The young man explained that he had turned into a bird. But they knew that this was the god of omnipotence Ruse. He was the one he was talking about, the one who could take their side. The maiden of the mother goddess, turning to her, spoke to Ruse and asked if she had said that she wanted to leave with Will, and the girl said that it was so, because Lord Will was destined to leave this mountain to see and get to know the world. She came here to help him. The young man, turning to his father, Ruse, a little embarrassed, said that, in truth, he also wanted to get to know this world and the girl is his first friend that he made. Seeing Will's reaction, the goddess Luna Maria was very surprised. Ruse just watched this carefully. The goddess said that she had already talked to Will about this many times, but wanted to leave it up to him. Then suddenly Ronan asked everyone to wait a minute, because he simply could not accept all this. The same applies to the gods of healing and magic. He knew the saying, if you love someone, make your loved one free, but he really could not accept it. Will asked his father to listen to him, because this is how it is. At this moment, Wendell said that the outside world is full of evil and danger and it is their responsibility not to let him see it. 
but Lunamaria said that she could protect him. Then the Ronin and all three said that in this case the three of them would test them. If the two of them could get through them, then they would allow them to travel together. Having heard about the test, it sounded very intriguing and everyone agreed with these conditions. The gods wanted to make sure that the girl never came near their dear will again. Turning to Lunamaria, our heroes were ready because this was a test that they had to pass and fulfill their wishes. Ronan said that this would be good practice for our hero and, turning to the old man, said that Wendell would go first, using all the skills and spells he learned before his old age to bother the guys a little. Wendell then asked if Ronan couldn't show at least a little respect to his elders, but decided that if he was the first, then they could start. Wendell started with their bowl of water. Looking at this, the young man was surprised. He said that this was true and asked, because the old man asked if the young man could see that mountain. Pointing out the window, the young man had to go to the only cedar tree on this mountain. He had two hours. The guys had to carry this cup with them carefully, because not a single drop should spill. Our hero understood that they had to do this within two hours and then the girl said that everything was clear. Normally it would have taken well less than an hour to do this, but wasn't that too easy. Lunamaria asked the Lord to calm down, because she was also undergoing a training stimulant, so they could go through it together. The young man replied that she was right, but then they could start and everyone would be waiting for them at the end. Our heroes, leaving Will's house, began to walk towards the cedar tree. The young man, warming up, asked if Lunamaria was ready. The girl told Lord Will that she was ready and, rushing out of her seat, the young man said that they should have walked faster, to which Luna Maria was very surprised. Our hero ran away and then, calling Lord Will, he turned to her voice, asking what happened, and the girl asked if water would spill from the glasses while they were running. A gentle pulsating sound and it feels like not a single drop will fall. Maria, looking at our hero, apologized and said that she would not be able to run at such speed. At that moment she faltered and nearly spilled the drink from the cup. The young man, seeing this, tried to catch her and said that it was necessary to slow down the pace slightly. The girl said that perhaps it would be better this way. The next moment, taking the drinks in their hands, our heroes moved towards the tree, watching Will from the side. Lunamaria understood that she did not expect anything less from the young man. After all, even despite the situation, the guy did not change. Will was thinking that more than 40 minutes had already passed. The young man was thinking that everything was not going according to plan. At this moment, turning to Lord Will, the girl asked what happened. Then turning to Lunamaria, the young man understood that at this rate they would not achieve anything and, perhaps, they could go faster. Hearing this, the girl said that she had to apologize, but she could not go faster without spilling a drop. The young man thought about it, realizing that although other routes could be dangerous, he thought that they definitely had to take a shortcut. Then, turning to the Moon Mary, the young man said that she really did. At that moment she interrupted him and said so that the young man would not misunderstand her. She really did not want to lose due to lack of time, she would rather take the shortest path. The next moment, taking Luna Maria by the hand, our hero led her along the path that he knew. Looking at the girl who was walking right behind him, the young man tried to understand whether everything was okay with her, because he saw her shortness of breath. Then looking at the young man, she asked what was wrong. Only 30 minutes had passed, but Moon Maria was already at its limit. The young man thought to himself and then turning to her, said that they could take a break. Then turning to Luna Maria as they sat on the rock, she turned to the young man and he told her not to worry because he was more than sure that Wendell had foreseen this when he challenged them, and tried to understand what they needed to do. Lunamaria spoke to Will, saying that his level of endurance was simply unmatched. Then Will explained that he had been running through these forests since childhood so that yes, he could do it quickly. Then suddenly Lunamaria said that it reminded her of how the young man called her his friend. At that moment, the young man's heart began to beat very hard, and he asked her for forgiveness, because it was too much. Seeing his reaction, the girl only smiled. Luna Maria thought that there was no greater honor for her than to be his friend. Seeing her smile, our hero blushed again. He then tried to change the subject and asked the girl to tell him a little about human cities. The young man wondered if there were people with the same strength as him. Luna Maria explained that, of course, there were such people, but there is not a single person like Will himself. There is no person who could control a dragon as easily. Having heard about the dragon, our hero moved very close to Luna Maria, which greatly embarrassed her and said that he remembered this. While drinking tea, the goddess was very calm and then Wendell saw this and told her about it. But then she reminded Wendell that he really told her this, because it was he himself who gave the impossible task to the guys. Ronan was nearby, saying that the girl was right, because if Will were alone, it would be too easy. Be that as it may, this is another story where a guy is trying to help a girl.
There were only five minutes left on the clock and then the goddess said that she could not wait for the young man to come to hug him and console him. After a complete pogrom, Wendell just listened to them carefully and didn't say anything, just smiled. Ronan and the goddess began to argue. Then looking at Wendell, they asked what was the matter, how could something go wrong? Then Wendell said that he just thought about how little the girl believed in the boy and asked her to look ahead. At this moment, Lunamaria and our hero walked together with glasses, straight towards the gods. Seeing this, Ronan was very surprised, and our hero, approaching the magician, said that they did it. Seeing Will and Lunamaria, Ronan said that he would understand if Will got here himself, but why was this girl able to get here too? Then they asked to show the bowl, because the water really remained, and Ronan said that this could not have happened. Having run here, the bowl should have remained empty. At that moment, they saw that the water was frozen. Then looking at it, Ronan and the goddess could not believe it, was it really fair? Wendell said that this could be done, why not? Because he said to bring the cup without spilling it, but he did not dictate other conditions. The young man remembered how he fought the dragon and decided that freezing the water would be a great way, and they had little time left, so Wendell asked the guys to give him the cup. At that moment, our hero cast a spell on the water and then Wendell said that it was very good and laughed. Our heroes were very happy and high-fived each other, saying that they had done a great job. Wendell also talked about the two of them passing the first test. Then Ronan, looking at them, said that the guys were happy early, because everything was not over yet. Now the second test will begin, his test by the god of swords. Therefore, the guys needed to get ready, Ronan said, taking out his sword. Turning to the old man, Ronan told him to do what they were talking about and then, hearing this, asked if he had asked him for a favor. The next moment, Wendell's training golem appeared in front of them, which was supposed to give battle to our hero and Lunamaria, who was with him. Seeing him, Lunamaria asked if the golem was too strong for such a test, and our hero said that Ronan's madness was beginning to frighten him. The goddess standing behind them said that she was not angry, it was just a muscle in the head, and Ronan said that he did not hear anything. Our hero was glad that he could finally fight the golem. Hearing this, Lunamaria asked if the young man was serious at that moment. If I understood everything correctly, then this will not be very difficult, Will said, because he is sure that it will be easier than Wendell's test. At this moment, Ronan said that he would have two conditions. First, only a sword can be used. Having heard about the sword, our hero thought that then it would be much more difficult than he thought. And Ronan's second condition was that this was after all a test, so Lunamaria would fight. The young man said that he, too, could fight, turning to Ronan, then he said that the girl could not. Maybe he knew what she was capable of, but about the fight he will only say one thing. He is not so kind as to allow only Will to do everything. But Lunamaria had never even held a sword in her hands, the young man said. To which the girl asked if she could take her sword and Ronan said that she could use her sword. The girl, taking out her sword, called on the great mother of God to grant her her blessing. Lunamaria explained that the maidens of the temple often travel, and therefore are trained to wield a sword. This was mandatory for everyone. Looking at this, Ronan asked if the young man now understood. Our hero was only surprised to himself. The young man said that it would be fair if he passed some test. Then it was now clear that a worthy opponent had appeared. When Will was five years old and he could already defeat such a golem. Wendell looked at it and thought it was very entertaining. The goddess who was watching said that if the girl was afraid, then she could simply give up. But in this case they simply would not pass the test. At this moment, Lunamaria said that her will was carried by the mime. She is, after all, the protector of Lord Will. If she cannot even defeat a golem, then she has no right to be called Lord Will's friend. The girl said that she would do her best to win. Looking at her, Will asked Lunamaria to wait, then thought that he should have believed in her. Then the girl, confident in herself, told the young man not to worry, because he would definitely win. Ronan, seeing her reaction, said that it seemed she was already ready and said that they could start the fight. Gollum went to attack Lunamaria and she, dodging his attacks, thought about what she needed to do next. The girl thought that she had pretty good chances, and this golem was quite slow, but she wouldn't be able to pass the test simply by dodging it. Lunamaria thought, speaking about it out loud, so she decided to go on the attack. While attacking the golem, our heroes watched her carefully and Will tried to support her. Having wounded the golem, the girl tried to understand why he was still moving. The next moment, the golem attacked Lunamaria and seeing this, Will could not contain his fear. At that moment, Luna Maria thought that in this case she would try something different and looking at the golem that stood right in front of her, she thought about what she could do with him now. Ronan, who stood watching the battle between Lunamaria and the golem, thought that all her attacks were useless against him. Will asked what level this golem was and Wendell answered that the golem was of the second level. 
but probably the magician put too much magic into it and it seems that, according to the qualifications of the Magic Academy, its strength is now approximately level 10. Hearing this, Will was surprised, then Wendell said that he could not allow the girl to get hurt and he would destroy him right away. At this moment, Lunamaria was fighting the golem and thought that she needed to focus on her test. Ronan, who was watching the girl, thought that she had a pretty good sword. Her skills in using holy magic were also impressive. But, unfortunately, holy magic is only good against undead. Against golems it is practically useless. Will, watching the fight, thought that if the girl did not have the strength to defeat him, then he would have to help her. Turning to Lunamaria within himself, our hero thought that he had to weaken the golem. At this moment, Ronan attacked our hero, cutting off a small piece of his hair and thereby warning him. Ronan explained to Will that he did not want to harm him, but he also could not allow him to help the girl, much less help weaken the golem. All Will could do now was talk, or rather provide moral support to Lunamaria, who was fighting against the golem, trying to win this challenge. At this moment, Lunamaria asked Lord Will not to worry, because it would never lose. The young man could not understand what he had just done and, out of anger, punched his fist straight into the ground, thinking about how he could help the girl now. Then he decided to remember what weaknesses golems have. Then Wendell said that apparently the girl would not be able to defeat this golem. And then he remembered Wendell and his childhood. Wendell once taught him and told him about golems. Our hero was very surprised when he heard about golems. Then Wendell explained that a golem is a creature made with the help of magic because the young man himself had already fought with it several times in training. They can be made from different materials, for example, there are stone, earthen, sometimes iron is created to make them stronger, but any golem has a weak spot. When a golem is created, its name is written on it in runes, if you cross out the first letter of the name, the meaning of its runes will change and it will disintegrate. Then the young man said that he could be defeated not only in this way, Wendell said that it already depends on whether the young man is stronger than him in terms of characteristics. Remembering this lesson, the young man tried to understand where his runes were, because they should have been on his body. Turning to Ronan, the young man asked he could not stand by and do nothing, and asked if he could examine the golem with the help of magic. Ronan said that he allowed it. Using the magic of support and use on himself, the young man did an analysis and saw the flow of magic inside the golem. His name is in the center among all the paths, here he found his name. Turning to Lunamaria, Will said that his weak point was on the top right of his shoulder, and the girl had to cross out the first rune. The girl could not understand when the moment would be to attack, then our hero said that he would give her a signal. She had to listen carefully, at that moment the golem began its attack on Lunamaria. The young man commanded her to jump, the girl obeyed our hero and did as he said. The next moment the young man said that now she had to attack the golem. By attacking him, she was able to defeat him, and the young man turned to Ronan, then he said that it was a wonderful team effort. In addition, Lunamaria was excellent with a sword, and they did not give this golem a chance. This was only the first part of testing her compatibility with Will, the rest was left up to Will, Ronan thought to himself. After all, Will used to train on his own and he didn't have friends he could rely on, and now that they have each other, how will they cope with difficulties? In addition, the girl believed Will all the time and did what he said without hesitation. At that moment, Lunamaria rushed straight into the arms of our hero and then hugging him, the young man was very embarrassed. Looking at all this, the goddess called the girl Petty Trash. At this moment, Lunamaria said that this was very embarrassing and the girl also asked for forgiveness from the young man. Turning to Ronan, they looked at him and Ronan said that both guys were amazing. They passed the second test, which they were both very happy about. Turning to the goddess, our hero asked what the last test would be, because there was only one test left. Then, looking at them, she said that this would be something interesting, so our hero tried to understand what kind of test he would have to go through. Evening came, and our heroes were frying food near the fire. Turning to the girl, our hero handed her the stew and, having tasted it, Lunamaria said that it was very tasty and Will cooked excellently. Will explained that they took turns cooking on camping trips, and lately his parents had started praising him for his cooking. The girl explained that as his follower, cooking was a matter of honor for her. And then turning to Lunamaria, the young man asked if she knew how to cook. The girl replied that the priestesses had to do everything themselves, so that now she could be responsible for cooking. The young man offered to cook in turns. The girl explained that as his followers she wanted to do all the routine things and turning to Mr. Will she asked if they could sleep today. She told the young man that he had gone through a lot today. He needed to rest. In addition, he needs to sleep before the final test, not to mention the fact that the inhabitants of the dragon's lair are nocturnal. 
The goddess, looking at our heroes, thought to see what she had to arrange for the two of them. Then pointing her finger at the young man and Lunamaria, she said that the two of them should have kissed right here and now. Hearing this, Ronan and Wendell did not understand what kind of test this was. The goddess reported that her dear Will would still pass any test that she gave him. As soon as this happened, he would go somewhere wherever his eyes looked. As soon as they are left alone, they will do it, the girl said, if this happens, it better happen right in front of her eyes. Turning to Lord Will, Lunamaria looked at him. The young man was very embarrassed and thought that he could pass the test if he just kissed Lunamaria. But turning to his mother, he wanted to say something. At that moment, Ronan told her to stop this and not give him tests that he would never agree to. Then Wendell said that the girl would have to choose a more suitable test for Will, otherwise they would not accept her participation. Ronan said, agreeing with them, Maria said that now her makeup was no longer as effective as before, because she was old, and when they heard this they were very surprised. The girl explained that she had run out of herbs for skin care, and whether our heroes realized it, they could go and gather something for her. Then our hero thanked Mother Maria, saying that they would not gladly accept this test. And Maria's mother, looking at her son, thought that he really was the cutest and said thank you. However, she didn't finish asking because they really should be celebrating. The young man did not accept what she meant. Then the girl continued saying that they would head to the only place where these herbs grow, in the northern caves of the mountain, in the dragon's lair. Turning to Lord Willa, Lunamaria asked him about this. Then the young man said that, as the name suggests, this is where the local dragons live. This is a dangerous place that even forest animals avoid. The plant they need is called the sacred orchid. This valuable flower that usually does not bloom at this time of year, and they must bring it by tomorrow noon, Mother Maria said. The young man obeyed her and informed her that he would do as she wanted. Hearing this, she said that the young man was giving his all along with Luna Maria. The next moment they set off on their hike. After sleeping for the night, they had a good night's sleep and both had breakfast and went to the cave. Arriving at the cave, the hero illuminated the path so that they could go further and the girl asked if this was a cave of dragons and, judging by their passages, not so big. The young man explained that Wendell said that the entrance used by the dragons is at the top of the mountain, and they will reach their wide lair if they go further. The young man also asked the girl to be careful, because he did not know what kind of dragon was here. They constantly move their food and therefore never stay in one place for a long time. These ferocious animals, who also try to hunt forest animals, leave a lot of trouble, Will said. Having passed through the cave, they came to a beautiful place and then Lunamaria said that they had already gone quite far and it seemed that they had reached the lair. Will said that her guesses were correct, but he did not see any dragons nearby. Maybe they were hunting and then Lunamaria said that it seemed like luck was on their side. Descending the mountain, our hero explained that now they could look for the sacred orchid. They needed to hurry, so he asked Lunamaria to follow him, taking her hand. Having descended, they watched and looked for this orchid but could not find it anywhere. Our hero said that they would have to dig deeper. If they were not on this floor, they would do it. Then suddenly Lunamaria smelled flowers and turning to Lord Will, the next moment he also turned to the girl, telling her to lie down because the dragon was right above them and it was a blue dragon. The next moment, the dragon began to attack our heroes and they had to jump away on different sides. Looking at the girl, the hero asked how she felt and the girl said that she was unharmed and asked not to worry. At that moment, the dragon headed straight towards her, trying to attack the girl. Lunamaria drew her sword and so did our hero. Looking at the blessing, the young man realized that he would protect her with a barrier, but the girl said that Lord Will did not need to do this, because there was no need to waste the blessing. The girl reported that she smelled the flower, the holy orchid was somewhere nearby. Lord Will began to jump on the walls and tried to fight the dragon. Then I watched Lunamaria become very worried about the young man. Pointing his sword at the blue dragon, our hero addressed him, saying that these places belonged to the gods and good mountain animals. So the dragon had to leave and he would spare him. If he does this, the dragon as soon as listened to our hero, the next moment he flew away. Lunamaria, running up to the young man, asked how he felt and the guy said that he was fine. Turning to the girl, she exhaled and then, turning to her, the young man asked if she really found an orchid, and the girl said that she felt something similar. Lord Will suggested we go and have a look. Arriving at the flower, he said that it was a consecrated orchid that was right in front of them, and the young man said that there was only one flower here, but it was in full bloom. 
While plucking the flower, the young man said that they would not get to Mother Mary with her and would complete the test. Taking the flower with them, our heroes headed towards his house. They had to leave before another dragon returned, so they had to hurry. Coming out of the cave, our heroes enjoyed the sun and said that it was not yet until noon, that they would not have any problems with this test and that all this was thanks to Lunamaria. Hearing this, the girl was very embarrassed and said that it was not so. That was all, because the young man was able to drive away the dragon. Upon hearing this our hero was very embarrassed. Then the girl said that the young man looked like a dragon tamer, and now he said that it was necessary to go and deliver the orchids to finally receive God's blessing on their journey. Then a friend of our hero came out, a deer, and when he saw him, our hero turned to the deer named Max. Lunamaria asked what kind of deer it was. Then the young man explained that it was his friend Max. At this moment, an attentive friend tried to sniff Lunamaria, and she just looked at him in surprise, holding a flower in her hands. Max was telling our hero that he shouldn't have come here, didn't he tell him that this area was dangerous? Then Lunamaria, looking at our hero, realized that the young man could talk to animals. At that moment our hero realized what was the matter, Mother Maria had outwitted them. At this moment, the young man said that their ordeal was not over yet, turning to Lunamaria. Then the girl tried to understand what the true purpose of Mary's mother was that she gave them this test. Because all this was not just like that. Will told Luna Maria that the mother goddess Maria deceived them. Then the girl realized what it was. Our hero, turning to Mother Mary to himself, tried to understand what the goddess wanted from them and why she gave them such a test. Luna Maria, looking at the young man, did not understand what the young man wanted to do. He stroked the deer's face and said that Max had a newborn daughter and that she was sick. He came here to find medicinal herbs. All the way to the dragon's lair the deer walked here. At that moment Lunamaria said that the young man wanted to tell her that Max needed the sacred orchid to save his sick daughter. Max said that the one who told him that a holy orchid was needed. And our hero interrupted the deer, asking if this mother was Mary. He nodded, the young man said that he knew so. The young man realized that Maria's mother knew about Max from the very beginning, which is why she arranged this test. Turning to Max, the young man asked how his daughter was, because after all, she needed this medicine right now. Then Maria asked if the girl wasn't testing the young man's kindness, so they had to give the orchid to Max. The girl guessed from the expression on our hero's face. Then will explain that Mother Maria was actually not so gentle. If they return empty-handed, she will give them no credit for the test and either they will take the sacred orchid, or they will save the life of a friend's daughter and look for another flower before time runs out. Will knew he had to make a decision. At this moment, Maria's mother was cleaning the house and thinking about her son. Ronan, watching her from the side, talked about cleaning the room of her adult son. Didn't she babysit him too much? Ronan asked, looking at the girl. Then she, turning to him, said that he could not leave here, because he had been lying in the mud all day yesterday. Ronan, hearing such complaints, said that his morning bath was excellent, thanks to this and that the girl fed him sleeping pills and buried him. And then looking under the table, he thought that the young man would not begin to hate her if she did this. After all, he was already 15 years old, and she couldn't help but find his interesting nature of the woodcut. Couldn't she? The Ronan asked the goddess who was cleaning. Then the girl said that they couldn't find such a thing and what about where the young man would even get them from? If Ronan himself finds them, it will be his fault, she said. At that moment, they began to bicker again and then looking at Ronan, she saw that he was in a good mood, even when Will was about to undergo the tests. Turning to Ronan, she asked if he really thought that the young man would be able to pass the tests. Ronan said that, of course, defeating the dragon was a trifle for Will. Then the next moment he asked what Maria did, saying that she was treacherous. From her face and grin Ronan realized that her test was not as simple as it might seem at first glance. After all, he said that this doe, who was Will's friend, and the goddess asked not to confuse things. The deer really needs the sacred orchid to survive and it actually ran out of herbs, Maria explained. But if they were just going to end up with more orchids than they needed, there was no point in doing all this. It was impossible, Ronan said listening to the goddess, but it is true that orchids grow in abundance, deep inside the lair. But the deeper they go, the higher the chance of cheering up the powerful dragon. If he were alone, he could have searched hard, but time was limited. This girl would hold him back, the goddess said. She believed that the young man had no reason to take risks, and at best they would only find one orchid on the upper levels. Goddess Maria said that this kind boy would probably give the deer his orchid. She was wondering if he would have enough time to return and find another one. Maria said with a grin. Then, turning away, she told Ronan that maybe she should check the futon next time. After all, the room would be occupied for quite some time, to which Ronan only grinned. 
The goddess, turning to him, asked what he meant with his grin. He said that for how long the girl was going to underestimate him. Hearing that she underestimated the young man, she was very surprised. Then Ronan told her that he had already told her that she was babysitting him. Ronan tried to explain to the goddess that Wendell, and he only wanted to keep an eye on the young man, but they knew that if he left this mountain, he would become even stronger. Now he can stand on his own two feet. Turning to Maria, our hero said that he had to apologize to her, and the girl said that his desire was a law for her, and that he was going to give the orchid to Max, wasn't he? Then the young man asked if this suited her, and she said that she could not neglect his friend when he was in trouble. Then the young man thanked her for her understanding and the fact that she was ready to sacrifice the flower. Lunamaria asked what would happen to their test, since they no longer had time. The young man told her not to worry about it, because he would go down alone to the lower levels of the lair and find another one. If he runs down to the lower caves, then with all he has, he can find the place where they grow and ask to wait for the girl here. Grabbing his hand, Lunamaria said that she would go with our hero. But the young man said that he could not allow her to do this, because the dragons on the lower levels were not at all like those they had met. Then hugging his hand, the Virgin Mary said that this was another reason why she had to go with him. After all, what will happen if the dragons kill the young man or what if he does not find the orchid? Has the young man really forgotten? The girl told him, reminding him that it was her nose that found that orchid. Our hero, looking at Luna Maria, the young man said that she was right in giving the flower to his friend. He said that everything was ready. Looking at Max, the young man asked why he was like that. Was he really going to find the orchid himself so that he wouldn't have to worry? The young man reported that this would not work, because his daughter should have been his main priority now. Then the young man looked at his friend's paws and realized that he had been jumping for so long that his paws were hurting and it was all for the sake of his daughter. The next moment our hero cured his friend so that his skin and fur began to shine again. Turning to Max, our hero stroked his nose and asked him to take his daughter the next time they met again. And now he could run. Saying goodbye to Max, our hero said that now it was their turn, so raising the moon Maria in his arms. The young man said that now they had to run. He really embarrassed the girl with this. But Luna Maria, turning to Lord Will, said that they would get there as quickly as possible. A gust of wind would protect them from the oncoming wind, but they needed to be careful. Will told the girl not to bite her tongue along the way, while he was carrying her along with the headwind. Turning to the moon Maria, our hero said and smilingly said that they had to deal with this matter. The girl, looking at the young man, said that they could do it and agreed with him. The next moment they rushed out of their place and Will ran straight to the cave. At this moment, Maria, who was cleaning the room and hanging the laundry, looked at the sky and thought that she had gone so far as to clean the young man's room. But it seemed to be pointless. Looking out the window, I thought that she was sad, but she would prepare something upon their return. At this moment, all three gods looked at the leaves that were falling from the trees and at the sky in which the sun was shining, thinking about Will who had grown up completely, and they would have to say goodbye to him soon. At that moment, with stunning kindness and strength, the test was passed, and our heroes returned together. Maria the goddess, at that moment her drink and then Ronan, calling her, said that it was time for them to return, did she not think the same? After looking at that time, I realized that she was still sulking about this situation. But wasn't it obvious that Will was going to leave? They were watched by Wendell, who saw two of them. He asked, even if so, the young man was like a bird in a cage, they could not keep him locked up forever. Looking at the sky, Ronan and the girl thought that judging by the sun it would be any minute. The next moment, the foot of our heroes entered near the house of the gods and Will informed his parents that he had returned. After looking at him, everyone was very happy and the goddess, stepping to our hero, thanked him and invited him home. Ronan, stroking the young man on the head, said that the guy was a good fellow. Three days and three nights passed, he saw that the young man was getting stronger. Our hero was smiling at his father. Ronan, looking at Maria's moon, said that she had also worked very hard, addressing the girl and saying that she already had a lot of sacred orchids. Looking at the hands, and with so many, even Maria will not be able to resist. At that moment, it was Maria who ran up to our hero and grabbed him, hugged him, started shouting Will's name, that Ronan even fell to the side. Maria's hugs always confused the hero, because she pressed him very close to her chest. While she was hugging him, she asked if our hero was hurt and if he didn't miss her. Ronan, lying on the side, said that the girl was too worried about the young man. In addition, he can use the healing spell she taught him. Will asked if the orchid had worked on Max, then Maria told the young man not to worry, because this deer had only recently returned. 
She prepared medicines and gave them to him. In a few days he will be back on his feet. Hearing this, our hero and Luna Maria breathed a sigh of relief. Then Wendell came up to them, looking at the cheerful company, saying that Maria, by the way, forgot to tell them something. Maria, pouting, looked at our heroes, and the next moment she turned to them, asked, saying that they could not bring orchids from the dragon's den, and that they had passed the third test. Hearing this, our heroes were insanely glad that they had passed all the tests. At that moment, Father Ruse appeared, saying that it was all very good, addressing Will and the priestess who were standing not far from him. When our hero saw his father, he called him and then he said that he had witnessed all three trials and that the guys could leave in 10 days. In 10 days on the day when Will turns 15, he will reach adulthood, and until then they had to prepare, and now they could rest before the road. Everyone who heard this understood that they had a little more time to spend with Will. After hearing Rue's instruction, Mother Maria said that it was all good, agreed with it, then, turning to Will, said that he could go swimming. Addressing the girl, she said that she could also go, because she had cooked dinner while waiting for him. Hearing these words from Mother Maria, our hero was very happy. Addressing Luna Maria, the young man said that they could go, because he adored his mother's cooking. To which Ronan said that even though he said so, it might be better if the girl stayed away from Maria. Ronan said standing next to the girl, in her ear. Well, nothing will hide from Maria's ears, so when she heard what Ronan was saying, she turned around. Ronan said that he didn't mean it as a threat, it was just that the girl was constantly mixing medicinal herbs and so her smell was just terrible, but will seem to like it all. Ronan said that he cooked a delicious meal himself, so the girl could not worry about it and could go ahead and not worry for the next 10 days. And that Maria reported that she would do so, the next moment they all came together to the set table, in front of which the young man's mother was standing and was very proud of herself, what kind of dinner she had prepared for our hero. Everyone sat down at the table and began to taste the meal, it was very fun, everyone was laughing and talking. Looking at Luna Maria, our hero offered her various feasts, which made the girl dizzy. And the next moment, having eaten to the brim, our heroes began to go to bed. Only one will could not sleep, and he was sitting on the window looking at the moon. The next day, when the young man was standing next to Ronan, and Luna Maria was watching them, Ronan explained that there were only a few days left before his departure and just so he knew, the time they spent together would be spent on training. The young man understood this, so he told his father that it was impossible to retreat. Wendell told the young man that he wanted to read something, because he was already an adult. He knows how to distinguish good from evil perfectly and it was very important to keep his brain in good shape. Wendell turned to our hero while he was sitting and reading another book. Taking a book, the young man said that he would take it and asked if his father could recommend him something else. At that moment, his father gave him a bunch of books saying that he would recommend them all to him, as well as the fact that the young man says that it will be a good time when spending their journey. Our hero, looking at all this, understood that he could not take so much with him, because it was a lot. Seeing the reaction of our hero, the father gave out, laughed, apologized to him, knowing that he really gave him a lot of books. Father Wendell, the young man turned to the magician and said that he would not waste the knowledge that he had given him, because it was important to be able to use his knowledge. Wendell said that let the young man have the opportunity to choose what he needed. There is a boundless flow of information inside him. Our hero, sitting in the bath, was pleased that he could finally rest. Then Mother Maria came to the young man and asked how the bath was, because she came to wash his back. Seeing Mother Maria, our hero was very surprised, because she did not need to do this, because he would soon become an adult and spoke in the shower. But Mother Maria, being in one towel, said that this did not mean that the young man was not still a child. Then no problem. His hair shone like a girl's, touching his hair said Mother Maria. This is thanks to the shampoo she made for her son. The young man also understood that his mother told him all the time about using cosmetics. While she was washing his back, Mother Maria told the young man to take care of himself while he was on the road. Hearing this, our hero was surprised by her tone and turned around and said that of course he would do it. Then she kissed him on the forehead and told him to come back if it seemed to him that the journey had become too difficult because the mountain on which they live in the blog will always be his home. The next moment the girl said that it was time to wash him from head to toe, to which the young man reported that it was not necessary to do this. He is already leaving now, because he was always very confused by the actions of his mother, who thought that he still remained a child. Lord Will was standing next to Luna Maria, who he put on his faithful friend Schultz and she thanked the young man for this, and he apologized that he asked her about it while she was spending time with his family. The young man told her not to worry, he was happy that the girl did it, because he did not think that she would want to visit the mountain. 
Luna Maria said that the land on which our hero grew up, she might not be able to see it with her own eyes, but she would like to feel it. The young man said that she could be sure she would not be bored here. Sunlight breaks through the crowns of the trees, while cool water flows down this big river, refreshing a gust of wind. The pleasant sound of leaves falling on this hill. The forest that brings these delicious fruits. There are so many things that our hero liked. At that moment Maria was swimming near the lake and watching her. The young man was very happy with his surroundings. At that moment, the beasts appeared next to him, greeting Will. They also really liked the girl, so they spent a lot of time together. Ten days later, all three gods looked at our hero. He gathered, tied his bag, and they congratulated him on his 15th birthday, saying that he was leaving that day. Thanking everyone, our hero said special thanks to Mother Maria, Father Ronan and Father Wendell, saying that they were already leaving. While they were walking through the forest, the young man turned to the girl, asking him if the girl was trying to find out if something had happened or not. But he said that since they left, he just followed her to the north, but did they really go somewhere in a particular place? Hearing this, the girl was very surprised. Then our hero reported that he was coming down from the mountain for the first time and knew only what he was taught. The girl said that, of course, they were going to a certain place. They will start with the fact that they were currently in a large forest, which is surrounded by a mountain inhabited by the gods. These lands belong to the kingdom of Midoa. As for where they were going, it would be the place where the goddess Mother Earth tells them to go, the forest on the edge of the domain of the kingdom of Midoa. Listening to Lunamaria, our hero tried to ask if there was anything there for them. The girl explained that there was something special and it was a sacred sword. Hearing this, our hero strained very much and listened to Maria, then she continued her story. Speaking of, that the sword was in the forest, piercing a huge boulder. They say that he is waiting for someone who will finally be able to pull him out. Upon hearing this, our hero was very excited, saying that he had read about this story in a book. But then he said that in this book there was someone who was fit to pull out this sword and Lunamaria explained that indeed it would be the hero of the sword, but this is the divine guidance of the goddess. It had to make some sense and maybe, it is our hero, he will be able to pull out the promised sword. The girl was speaking to Lord Will, unable to control himself, Lord Will, addressing the girl, said that they had to speed up the pace a little and grabbing her hand, told her to hold on to him. If they are in a hurry, they will have time before they arrive. Our hero apologized to the girl, saying that she asked him, and the girl said that they had to break camp for the night and go to the nearest village. It was also important to stock up on food for the trip. After hearing about the village, our hero explained to Lunamaria that he was looking forward to it. Lunamaria was surprised by this. Will explain that he had only recently met one person, and to be precise, her and the girl said that it was a big part for her. She also informed the young man that they would not see large cities, but there were many smaller ones on their way. The next moment, our hero suddenly told Maria to wait a little and dived into the bushes. Show the mushroom that he found. The young man explained to the girl that she could leave the search for food to him. Because a delicious mushroom was found, he was well versed in such things. Luna Maria said that it was very good and then the young man explained that in any case they could hurry now. The girl was trying to keep up with her lord. At this moment, the man who was sitting near the pond and fishing was carefully watching what kind of fish he could catch. Suddenly he heard footsteps and thought that it was a bear. Pulling out his sword, he shouted to the bear to stay away, but only our heroes appeared from the bushes. Seeing people, the man was very surprised, and our heroes were also very surprised that they saw a fishing man. He began to smile and told them not to scare him so apparently. He never thought that he could meet other people so deep in the forest. The young man explained that they were traveling and asked what about this man. Then the stranger explained that he was here to challenge the king of this lake. The one he calls the hero of the sword said he really wants to see the king's lake. After hearing this, our hero asked about the hero. Then the young man explained that maybe he didn't look like that, but he was a servant of the hero of the sword. After hearing about the hero of the sword, our hero was very excited and said that she wanted to meet him. But the stranger said that, unfortunately, the hero of the sword was not there. He was waiting for him on the outskirts of the forest. Our hero was very confused by this. Then Lunamaria said that the stranger was all alone, so deep in the forest. He said it was true, but that's because the hero trusts him enough to go alone. That there was a girl in front of them and then she said that she had to live up to the expectations of the hero. So reeling in the next victim, she threw her into the water. The next moment, she realized that it was the one she was looking for. The fish pulls her fishing rod, it was the undoubted king of the lake. At that moment she caught a Kayatara. Our hero saw this and said that he was too big, she had to let him go. To which the girl explained that she would not give up and the next moment the young man told her to stop. 
If she continues in the same spirit, she will fly away with the fishing rod into the lake, which happened. And the girl began to fall right into the mouth of the fish, thinking that now she would be eaten. Addressing the Lord Hero, at that moment someone was shouting and at that moment our hero was rushing fast to the girl. Grabbing her in her arms, she realized that she had just flown away in the air, but then she suddenly saw the young man and thanked him, saying that she wanted to thank him somehow, but she had nothing with her now. The young man told her not to worry, he was just glad that everything was fine with the girl. Looking at the fishing rod, she realized that her fishing rod had broken and it looked like she would have to give up the fish. Our hero said that he was in no way. Lunamaria said that not to mention that his size was significant, and it would be difficult for the girl to take him with her. The girl reported that the young man was right, she would give up and return to the hero. Upon hearing this, our hero asked if they could go with him and the girl replied that of course and asked to be allowed to introduce her to my lord. She was a servant of the sword hero, her name was Lynx. The young man, shaking his hand, said that he was Will, and the girl who was next to him was Lunamaria, a priestess of the earth goddess. Then when she heard this, she asked if she was also a servant like her, turning to Lunamaria and the girl said that she served Lord Will. Hearing this, Lynx was surprised that one of the priestesses, the goddess of the earth, was serving someone. Seeing the young man did not ask maybe our hero was a great magician. This explains his magic of flight. The young man said that there was nothing like that. He was nobody, for that matter, he had just left the deepest part of the forest, the mountain that he called home. Hearing about the deep part, the girl asked if he meant the mountain where the gods live. Our hero replied that he grew up there. Link said that if the young man had saved her life, it was too much for her to believe it. Different people live there, because she would never believe it, but Luna Maria said it was true. After all, people had not yet heard the name of Lord Will, but in time it would spread everywhere, she was sure of it. Then Lynx, listening to Maria, said that the hero of the sword would not lose. In this respect, he stands at the top of the fencing world. Lynn said that if anything, they were approaching the edge of the forest. The hero lord's camp was supposed to be here. At that moment, Lunamaria was telling Lord Will that she had smelled blood. Lynx broke from her seat and ran forward, shouting, and his lord hero. Our hero also followed her. At that moment they heard the grinding of metal and it was ahead. Then they saw how someone was dealing with trolls and the girls who were nearby applauded the young man, saying that the Lord Hero was very cool and had to show these dirty goblins. Attacking him without knowing who he was was exactly what one would expect from these stupid goblins, but it was too late to regret it now. Now that the goblins had shown themselves in front of him and it was better not to hope that they would leave here alive. It was a hero who dealt with goblins to be in front of him. The girls who were watching nearby could not hide their admiration. Lord Hero, standing in front of the goblins, said that he would be their opponent, because he was the hero of the sword Lord Levin. Seeing this, our hero realized that before him was the hero of the sword. Looking at the person, which was right in front of him, the hero spoke. That it was he, the hero of the sword, who was going to deal with the goblins. Seeing him, the young man was very surprised. Will looked at the hero with all his eyes and the girls who were near the hero supported him. His faithful companion also said that the hero of the sword was the bravest. At that moment, Will was approaching the Lynx. Lynx was glad that the young man was also fine, and our hero said that he was very worried. But the girl, pointing to the hero that was right in front of her, asked if they had seen someone more beautiful. After all, this is the very hero she served, Levin Heroes of the Sword. Will, looking at the hero, thought that he had a slightly strange voice and then Lunamaria said, but he was a little older than them. It was interesting how old such a beautiful young man was. Lynx, listening, said that Levin was the strongest lord of the sword in this country. This sword is so strong, sharp that it cuts stones as if they were leaves. Moonlight Maria listening to all this said that it was amazing, and our hero was thinking to himself about his sword, which was so sharp. At this moment, the hero said that there were about 30 goblins and they dared to disturb them in the evening. But he did not think that they would not be able to leave just like that. At this moment the girls were giving the swordsmen applause. Upon hearing this, the hero thanked them and said that the guys in front of him were dangerous. Pay attention to the girls who were standing nearby. The hero was talking about how about them. These are the hero's fans and brave girls. Our hero looked at him and thought was it really the lord of the sword. He was wondering what kind of sword the young man uses. He went to the goblins and asked how they were doing. When attacking goblins, he told them to go away. What happened? Everyone thought someone was killed by a brave sword hero, and the guy, attacking the goblin, said that the goblins were too weak and it was easy. At that moment, a strong wind blew and Lunamaria paid attention to it. Then Link said that it was all the hero of the ball. Will watch carefully how the hero fought with the goblins. The young man thought to himself that, 
Of course, the hero was strong, but he noticed something else because there is something more here. He felt uncomfortable because of this ball. Fighting with goblins who shot arrows at him, the hero told them to bow down before him. The next moment, they all jumped on the sword hero and started gnawing on his hands. One bit him for and he said that how annoying he was. Then noticing this, Lynx shouted that Levin would be careful. The goblin that was on top of the tree wanted to shoot the hero. Lunamaria and Lynx, noticing this, told him to be careful, because they were going to shoot him from behind the tree. The next moment, when the hero already realized that the arrow was flying straight at him, Will appeared and saved the hero, which he did not expect at all. Our hero arrived in time, cutting an arrow that flew straight at the young man, which he didn't expect at all, looking at Will right in front of him. Will stood back to back with the hero, who was right behind him, and when he saw what the young man had done, he turned to him and asked how he dared to do it. To which Will, raising his hands from his sword, said that he was a traveler, and they met the lynx in the forest and came here, the young man explained. Then hearing this, the hero asked if they had met his servant and Will said that it was so, and that he would help. To which the hero did not understand, did he really ask for help? But the next moment he decided that it was necessary to continue the fight. Again looking at the goblins in front of him, the young man went on the attack. Will understood that the hero was focused only on the eyes, so he only sees them. It seems that the young man does not know how to fight in a team. Will noticed and thought to himself that it was necessary to follow the young man. But keep your distance. In the next moment, he also dealt with the goblins who were not far from him. The hero, looking at Will, did not understand why the young man had such good swordsmanship and the girls who were standing nearby were talking about how the child got there. Moreover, why was this child so strong? Did he really want to spoil the spectacle for them? because they needed a massacre. The girls said that the hero did not need an ally and chanted for the hero to kill the young man. Lynx at this moment, watching our hero, realized that he was brave, amazing, thinking about his hero. Will was the same, he can use magic, but uses a sword. At this moment, the hero, dealing with the goblins that were in front of him, thought about what was happening. The young man helped him or decided to take all his glory and thought that he did not like it. While he was thinking about it, the goblin that was not far from him began to attack the young man and he realized that he did not have time to fight with him. The next moment, Will helped him and dealt with the goblin that was next to him. The girls who stood nearby said that there were a lot of goblins and began to argue among themselves and either the hero coped with them or not. The hero said it was easy and then the girls shouted that the guy was brave and amazing. The young man thought that they were all fools and had so many opportunities with such a sword and that everything could be done. Our hero watching him thought that he was like a real master, he had little experience, he was just a boy. But at that moment the goblins began to run away. Everyone understood that the goblins were running away, and the hero was telling them to stop, because they could feel the full power of his sword. The next moment, Lynx ran up to him, saying that she was thanking the young man for his bravery. Looking at the Lynx, the hero asked if she came with these two and the girl explained that it was Will and his servant Lunamaria. Lynx drooped a little, apologized to the hero saying that she couldn't catch the king of the lake. He was too big, she couldn't get him. Will helped her when that fish tried to eat her, Lynx explained. Upon hearing this, the hero explained that the girl had nothing and what was he supposed to do now. Hearing their conversation, Will could not stand it and came up to them, telling the hero that how could he behave like that. There was nothing else that could not be eaten. Was the young man dying of hunger? Will asked him. Lynx ran to our hero and asked him to wait, because it was all right, it was her mistake. The girls who were rooting for the hero earlier asked the guys what they were doing and why they began to reproach the hero of the sword. At that moment, Lunamaria said that Will did not say anything to them, literally restrained himself from such annoying girls. Addressing Will, the hero said that if so, then he just didn't have enough goblins and since the young men liked it so much, they could get to know each other better, pointing their sword at him, the hero said. He challenged Will to a duel. Hearing this, the young man was very surprised by such a challenge. Addressing Will, the hero, who was by rank, said that the young man should take a sword because it was a duel. Will explained that if that was the hero's wish, then he agreed. At this point, Lunamaria asked Will to wait a bit and that they had to step away for a second. Dragging the hero away with her, the girl spoke to him and also to the hero who was standing nearby. Lunamaria dragged the young man away and addressed him, and our hero was surprised that the girl joined in their conversation. Then she talked about what he was doing, that the young man was serious about this duel, because after all, his opponent was a hero of the sword. The young man asked Lunamaria, because the sword master is not inferior to God, whether this was true and it was clear from his appearance that the young man wanted it. 
The words of our hero were true and Luna Maria said that it was true. Then, the girl reported that there was something else the young man had to win, because it's easy to understand that this person has an inflated self-esteem. An easy victory can change a lot. There is something in him that causes unpleasant sensations, and our hero did not understand what he already had to do. Then he said that it was possible to refuse the duel, but he thought to himself that he really wanted to win. Luna Maria, standing not far from our hero, asked if the young man was sure of his desire. Then our hero told her not to worry because he would come up with something. At this moment, the hero who was not far from them asked how long he had to wait. Will said that he apologized to him, that he made him wait a long time, because he wanted to try to fight with him, so he agreed to this fight. The hero asked our hero and said that he was wondering if this girl could dissuade him and this feeling was from the hero of the sword. The hero thought, looking at Will. Everyone said that they could start a battle, so grabbing his sword tighter, the hero ran at Will. The latter, seeing his attack, began to jump aside so that the sword would not touch him. Addressing Will, the hero told him to be harder, because he had been waiting for so long. Well, he didn't think that the fight would be long. The next moment, he attacked Will again, and he repelled his attacks, which the hero did not expect. He did not understand how the young man could repel his blow with such puny little hands. The next moment he attacked our hero again. The hero informed Will that they would fight for a very long time. The girls who stood nearby said that there was a great fight between them, they were wondering who would win. Luna Maria was also watching the young man, and Lynx, to be nearby, asked the girl to stop them before they killed each other. Hearing that Lynx was very worried, Luna Maria said that she wasn't even going to do it, because she believed in Will. Watching the fight between the two young men, the girl said. The next moment, our heroes clashed with their blades again, and the hero was very unhappy that he could not defeat the young man in any way. And Will, looking at him, thought that after all this, they would finally be able to get into the city. At this moment, the hero used all the will contained in the tip of his sword. Will recalled that he was also taught by Ronan's father when he started coaching. At that moment, our hero was getting very badly hit on the head with a sword and not understanding what he was doing wrong. Ronan, addressing him, said that the young man should learn to control his sword. The hero, wiping his eyes, reported that he had found caves with animals in the afternoon, so he was looking forward to when they would go there after training, to which Ronan did not understand at all what our hero was talking about. Addressing his son, he explained to him that the struggle was not just a clash of forces, this is a place where nothing obeys time. It goes on its own. The young man and the sword are fast, they are united, they defeat the enemy and swear to protect the allies. The young man had to put all his will into the sword. It was impossible to hesitate. Doubts could become his weakness, Ronan explained, showing exactly how to handle a sword. Looking at him, our little will said that he was tired and that he no longer had the strength, but he still learned his first technique, thanks to Father Ronan. Sitting on the ground and looking at Ronan, our hero spoke. After that, he couldn't move until night, the young man thought but it helped him in battle. Looking at the hero of the sword, our hero understood that all emotions could be seen on the edge, impatient and lost. This is what our hero saw. In order to wield a sword, you needed talent, you needed to be able to merge with it in movements. Why are all the attacks made not so sharp? Was he really the hero of the sword? Because he saw through him. This look, the hero of the sword thought, looking at Will. The next moment, when they clashed again in a duel and the hero of the sword began to attack Will, he flew away from his attack and wiping his hand, lay on the floor. Everyone rushed to Will. The hero stood nearby, out of breath and sheathed his sword. Then the young man stood up and realized that as expected from the hero. Getting up from his seat, the young man stretched out his hand to the hero, saying that they could not forget about this misunderstanding. He was just upset that the goblin had escaped. It was the hero of the sword and it was cool, everyone in the neighborhood said. They also praised Will, saying that he was also a daredevil and thanked them for the fight. Luna Maria, looking at Will, understood that he had deliberately set himself up and she was shocked because the young man fell under his blow, then laughing and asking if she was surprised. The young man explained that he remembered how his fathers played chess as a real duel. Ronan's father was hot-tempered when he loses, and the other tried to convince everyone that there was nothing wrong. That's what he always said. At this moment, suddenly the hero noticed something amiss and turning to Lynx, she, hearing the hero, said that she was running. The hero reported that everything here was covered in goblin corpses and it was necessary to go. Lynx, obeying her master, said that now, turning to Luna Maria and Will, she asked if they were going because they could continue their journey. Will explained that they were heading to the forest where the sword was located. 
on the northern border of the city of Northwood, the Holy Sword and the Lynx, looking at them, wished them a good journey, then shaking hands with our heroes, she said goodbye to them. The young man explained that they would never forget her help, even though they had known each other for a short time. But it was a lot of fun and said that he hoped they would meet again. Shaking hands, they were glad that everything was in order. Our heroes left, and the hero of the sword, along with his companions and Lynx, remained at the edge of the forest. Making a fire, they sat and talked. The girls explained to the young man that they were very glad that he got rid of the goblins, but said that there were a lot of them. Here Lynx, having prepared the food, told the hero that everything was ready and it was meat with cheese, peas, meat from fresh edible wild plants. The hero, seeing this, said that it looked very tasty and then everyone said that it was as a reward. Because they were all interested in how quickly the young man would eat it and the hero of the sword is a brave man, they said. Addressing the girls, the hero of the sword said that the girls were very cute, blowing on the food they offered to treat the hero. He ate a couple of spoons and said that it was excellent. The next moment, when they tasted the meal, everyone would like to feed the hero in turn. Laughing, he said that it was wonderful and that the girls took great care of him. Today everyone was sitting around the campfire. They laughed and began to eat their food, after which everyone fell asleep peacefully. And the hero, getting up from his seat, could not sleep, he went to the place of battle. Looking at his hand, he was wondering how she cooked it. If the heroes of the sword are a brave person, then she was very nice, he recalled. I thought about what a strange feeling he had, as if he had no hands, and he couldn't even hold a spoon. A strong flash of energy in the sword, Will's technique, comparable to the technique of the hero of the sword was a young man and really an ordinary person, the hero thought. Going deeper into the forest, he saw a lake, taking off all his clothes. He dived into this lake and it turned out that the hero was not a man at all, but a beautiful girl turned out to be the hero. There was a mark on her, this is proof that she was a hero of the sword. Diving deep into the water, she sank into her thoughts. Her father died, and her mother, a high-ranking family, simply crushed her for some kind of violation. Because of this, she had to give up the life of a girl and decide to live like a sword hero, she thought as she plunged deep under the water. Since childhood, thanks to her father, she learned to hold her sword confidently. But she was still a person, she was a girl who could not stand pressure, relied on fake vanity. Surfacing and lying on the smooth surface, she looked at the sky, thinking about her father and her mother. The next moment she realized that her fatigue was gone. Then she remembered Will again, thinking that maybe this boy had something to do with the holy sword. But it looks like even if that's the case, she has her own sword. But how could she become stronger, stretching out her hands to the sky, the girl thought. Our heroes again passed their obstacles and addressing the girl, the young man looked down from the mountain, saying that he saw a city near the northern border. This was the road leading to Northwood, Lunamaria reported, standing with our hero and watching the road to the land where the holy sword sleeps. Our hero, looking at the road, said that it was the road that was supposed to lead them to the city. Lunamaria walked beside him and said that the young man looked so happy. He would need to refresh himself after such a long journey. The young man, looking, thought that this path had been passed. No wonder yesterday he was impressed by this small village. On the way here, the residents were kind. Paying attention to the ground, Will said that apparently horses often come here, looking at the ground, with the remains of horseshoes. The girl said that she would not be surprised if there were paved roads, it looks like a fairly prosperous city. At that moment he was talking, the girl heard the carriage that was coming from the city. Seeing her, the hero realized that the carriage was rushing straight at them, so grabbing Lunamaria, he told the girl to be careful. At that moment, he saw a frightened face passing in the carriage of a girl. Luna Maria said that this carriage rushed right at him and told Will. She said that his face was not the same as always and that he was very scared. Our hero said that there was something wrong with this carriage. Someone is riding in it and it seems like there are a lot of them. Remembering the face of the girl who was scared, our hero said. Luna Maria asked if this worried the young man and if it was so, then he should have checked. The girl will wait for him, since it was very important for Will. Smiling, our hero said that they had agreed and thought that the carriage had gone there quickly, and that he did not see her anymore. The next moment, he asked the girl to wait for him here, saying that he would leave the luggage and asked the girl to be careful. Using his strength, Will flew into the sky and decided to look around. Then he looked to the side and saw a carriage that was rushing straight into the forest. He understood that he had to hurry, so starting from his seat, Will flew straight to her. At this moment, the girl who was sitting in the carriage was thinking that she was very scared and was calling for someone to help. 
Then suddenly a man burst into her, saying that it was really Shakai's daughter, and it was not bad, because he said that the girl had to go with them, stretching out her hand to her. The frightened girl was sitting huddled in the corner of the carriage, then suddenly, when a stranger pulled her hand, our hero appeared. When the man saw something in the sky that he wanted to take the girl, he did not understand what it was. Then suddenly the coachman was talking about someone attacking the carriage and looking at the roof they realized that they were right. This boy who was hiding attacked their carriage. The young man said that he was not hiding at all. He flew here and grabbing the man by the hand, he threw him aside. Climbing into the carriage, the next time he saw a girl who was sitting in the corner and apologized if he scared her. The young man explained that he would not harm her, on the contrary. He came to help and asked if she had heard about it. The young man explained that he was driving along the road some time ago and he saw her in the window. Hearing this, she was very surprised. Here a friend of the coachman shouted that what was going on for the noise in the carriage. And our hero reported that the girl was apparently abducted by people who are driving this carriage. This was true and when she heard it, she asked for help because she was the daughter of an Anaheim family and she was kidnapped. The guards betrayed her, they gave chase, the girl explained. Touching her forehead will calm the stranger because she was very scared. But he was here and now everything was fine, the young man reported. The next moment, ducking from a blow that hit directly into the carriage, our hero defended the girl so that she was next to him. The next moment, the men who fired the crossbow said that the young man was caught. Our hero saw the crossbow and realized that these men were aiming directly at him. But at that moment the girl who was sitting next to him was surprised by the bravery of the young man. The next moment our hero disappeared from the carriage and seeing this, the man shouted that it was impossible to kill the guy. It was necessary to bring him alive. Then they started looking for him. Our hero was sitting in the carriage thinking that something was wrong. Looking at the coachman who was sitting, the young man thought about how to get close to him. Then he saw an arrow sticking right out of his hand and thought that the coachman had lost consciousness. Because of the injury, the horses are rearing up. And the next moment he asked if the girl knows how to drive a carriage. Because he will provide her with his protection and everything will be fine. At this moment, our hero was looking out of the carriage and the girl who was sitting on the floor said that she had never tried. Then suddenly our hero knocked out the glass and dragged the coachman right into the carriage. Then touching his face, the girl said that the carriage was shaking too much now, it was necessary to reduce the pace right away. Watching our hero, she asked what he was going to do, and the young man quickly saw this road with a light, so he thought they could use the terrain and said that a little more. The next moment, he pushed another man out and got out of the carriage, and then jumped on the horse that was right next to him. Addressing the horse, our hero asked if she had heard him and, surprised by what the man was saying to her, the horse nodded to him. Then our hero said that he wanted to ask her for help and whether this horse would help him. The horse nodded proudly to our hero, the next moment they were rushing down the road. The man who chased our hero said that it was necessary to go faster, because how much trouble there was from this boy. Our hero, looking behind him, understood that everything was going according to plan. While he was flying, looking for a carriage, he examined the area and realized that he needed this particular cliff, and thought that he needed to accelerate and go to the other side of the cliff. Then, that they were following him, thinking that that's all they wanted to do, they reached the right speed and chased our heroes. The young man understood that now they could jump to the other side, so the carriage soared up and they jumped over, to which the men who were chasing our heroes could not understand how they could escape. While they were traveling through another country and broke away from their pursuers, our hero tried to heal the wounds of a man, but he understood that this would not affect him in any way. The young man informed the girl about this because she did not know that he had magic. The next moment, after looking at what the young man did, the girl reported that he had a wonderful recovery magic, turning to Will, and that they were lucky to meet the young man. Our hero reported that they need to continue their journey, a friend is waiting for him. The girl said that she understood. At that moment the young man she was looking at was thinking that he was so beautiful, strong, and gentle, and beautiful. No doubt she realized that this was her hero, looking at Will. The next moment, heading along with the carriage and Will was sitting at the reins, and the girl looked at him in love and hugged him. Then our hero asked if Karen could let him go, otherwise it was a little difficult for him to sit. The girl said that she would do whatever Will said, and our hero understood that he was somehow embarrassed. He still wanted to see Lunamaria. Lunamaria was standing not far from him and when she saw the young man, she smiled. She approached the carriage and then our hero said that he was apologizing for making the girl wait. 
This carriage was being chased by thieves, then when she heard it, she said it was a horror. And the stranger, looking at Luna Maria, asked Will who it was, thinking to herself that it really was her rival. Will explained that it was his companion, the assistant of the goddess Mother Earth Luna Maria. Getting up from her seat, Karen said that it was nice to meet her, she is from the Anaheim family, Wilson's companion. Then the girl reported that she was the love of his life. Turning to Karen, our hero was very confused. And after hearing this, Luna Maria asked Will if he would deign to explain to her what was going on. The young man explained that the girl was wrong. It was not very unexpected. Karen could introduce him to her father and said that she had to go home. Luna Maria said that this would not work, because they were in a hurry, they had a trip. They were going to the forest on the outskirts of Northwood in order to find the Holy Sword. This is their mission. Looking at Will, the girl asked. Will, seeing her in anger, said that of course it was so. Then Karen said that it was better to get an invitation there. Later hearing this, our hero was surprised. And the girl was talking about how, after all, the forest on the outskirts of Northwood in the merchant's house, standing under the very forest in which the great sword that they are looking for lies, belonged to her family, Karen explained to our heroes. Our heroes got into the cart and set off. Karen reported that they served delicious rolls with blueberries. They definitely had to look into her favorite restaurant. Luna Maria said it was very interesting. They would definitely look there sometime, she and Lord Will. Will sat and understood what it was, a confrontation between two girls. Karen said that she was afraid of upsetting Luna Maria, but they would only go there together, she and Will. But the girl reported that she actually accompanied Lord Will, so she had to be with him. The young man sitting between the two of them was trying to figure out how they had come to this. Looking at two angry girls and tired of them, our hero said that he forbade quarreling here, they should have helped the coachman better. The girls pouted and stopped talking to each other. Entering the carriage, they realized that there was something wrong with the coachman and it seemed as if he had a fever. Our hero thought about the fact that it seemed to him that the arrow was not poisoned, so the culprit was heavy bleeding. His blood pressure dropped and he wanted the girls to give it to him. Taking the bundle that will hand it over, Luna Maria asked if it was medicine. Ours said that it was so, he had prepared it in advance. It should definitely work, this recipe of his mother Maria. The girl agreed and asked if Karen would help her. She said that she would definitely help. The next moment Luna Maria lifted the coachman, and Karen tried to get him drunk. Then the coachman fell asleep. Looking at the coachman, who was getting better, everyone said that Lord Will was an amazing person. He was not only a swordsman personally, but also a magician, and even knowledge about the healing business was on top. Then Karen talked about how, by the way, the name of Lord Will's mother is so similar to the name of a goddess living on divine heights. Then Luna Maria reported that it was the same person. Hearing this, Karen was very surprised. Our hero reported that he was picked up and raised by the gods, the god of the sword, the god of magic and the goddess of health. So the young man was so talented, they thought. Karen thought that if they got married, she would have a divine mother-in-law and a divine father-in-law. Interrupting his thoughts, our hero asked what Northwood was like. He had never been in such crowded places, so he was very worried. Seeing his excited face, Karen fell in love even more, thinking that the excited Will was very cute. The young man, apologizing, called Karen again and then stopped flying in the clouds. She asked for forgiveness, saying that she said that Northwood was her homeland. Northwood is located near the northern border of the Kingdom of Midnia, the largest city in the north, surrounded by a fortress. The main specialization of this city, of course, is trade, since it is located near the borders at the entrance to the kingdom. There are just a lot of interesting things for sale in this city, and also a lot of different races besides people gather here. The company that topped all the sales lists, this company and its Anaheim families, said the girl proudly. Our heroes were very surprised by this. Karen reported that that was why in a hurry, she was heading to a neighboring city for negotiations. Despite the guards, she was attacked. She thought about what would have happened if Lord Will had not appeared. But then she realized that thanks to this situation, she had just met Lord Will. The young man reported that there were so many bandits and did the public order bodies work so badly for the country. In fact, this was not the case. The Kingdom of Midnia is one of the safest countries. Guards can be found at every kilometer. And this is just so that even a lonely girl can travel safely, including on patrol horses, just those who attacked her without finishing. She said that the rest is a matter in her company. Turning to Will and Karen, he said that they could not worry about admission to the Holy Sword Forest because she would do everything. In gratitude, her father will also give them permission, and she asked to take her with him, too, turning to Will. The girl thought that these would be historical moments and then Lord Will would receive the sacred sword. 
Karen said that unlike that priestess of Lunamaria, she would be able to capture this moment with her own eyes. Lunamaria said that her faith in the goddess of Mother Earth was unshakable, but still she felt anxious and said that it did not let her go. Hearing this, Will asked why. Because only a hero can take out a holy sword. Thinking about the hero, the young man realized that the one they met along the way, the hero of the sword is Levin. Will he be able to pull out the sword? Our hero recalled the knight. Then Karen interrupted him, telling the lord that the condition of the coachman had improved and the young man smiled when he heard this news. He understood that it was necessary to accelerate the pace, otherwise they would reach the city by tomorrow. While they were driving, they were suddenly stopped by some people, ordering Lord Will to stop. The young man was about to grab his sword, but then a man appeared in front of him, apologizing and bowing, telling him that the carriage that he was operating belonged to the company in which he served. The young man is not its representative, where did our hero get it? He asked him. Then Karen's friend got out of the carriage and turned to Johan, who was standing right in front of her and saying that everything was wrong and asked what he was doing here. Seeing Lady Karen, the man rushed to her, saying that the guards reported that her location was lost as a result of the attack. Hearing this, he immediately went to look for her. Realizing this, the girl pouted, saying that it was safer with Will, and then pulling out a sword, Johan asked if that person was a bandit who attacked her. If that was the case, then he would punish him. The next moment, Karen, stopping the old man, said that her Johan was wrong, because Lord Will saved her from those bandits and now she will explain everything. Looking at Will and Luna Maria, Johan said that everything was clear to him, so now they were the saviors of Lady Karen. From the bottom of his heart, he asked to accept his gratitude and bowed to our heroes, saying that they would forgive him. Karen reported that he was very protective of her and apologized to the guys too. Our hero, looking at Johan, said that they were there by accident. Karen said that the guys were going to the Holy Sword and they needed to rest in the mansion. Johan understood everything and then saying that their carriage was not in the best condition and therefore he could sit in this one, along with Lady Karen, pointing to the carriage nearby, saying that security was offered. Johan also reported that the guys could already go and wish them a pleasant journey to Northwood. Our hero smiled, standing with Lunamaria, and the next moment they got into the carriage and all headed to the city together. At that moment, the goddess was sitting at the table and crying. Then Wendell, who was watching her from the side, asked what happened to her and how long she was going to cry. Turning to Wendell, the goddess was very furious, saying that a few days had passed since her dear Will went on a trip and she didn't cry as long as he thought because how could she not worry here? Looking at Wendell, she asked if Wendell did not love Will. The magician only looked out the window and said that Will had probably already reached the city. While drinking her glass, Maria said that she hoped that everything was fine with Will, because Ruse said that the young man was the chosen one and he would face many trials. Wendell said that it was so, they gave the young man skills that would help him in this. Reporting about Luna Maria, he explained that that girl was quite strong in spirit and she would help him. At this moment, our heroes, sitting in the carriage, watched from the window the beauties that surrounded them and Karen reported that Northwood was already visible. Wendell asked if Maria had seen Ruse lately. The girl said that she had not seen him because he likes to disappear suddenly. Maybe he was keeping an eye on Will. At that moment, Ruse was flying directly over the carriage in which our hero was riding. Our heroes drove into the city, looking around, everything was interesting. Because Will came to this city for the first time in his life and it was interesting for him to watch people, of whom there were a lot. Realizing that it was very lively here, the young man saw so many people for the first time, saying that the city is not even worse than the capital itself. Karen was very glad that they liked it here and understood that Lord Will was delighted saying that she would really like to have a tour. But it was really a pity she had to report that she was fine. Our heroes agreed with her. The young man asked, their company was on this street. But the girl reported that the Anaheim company was located in the busiest point of the city. But her father suggested going to the mansion. That's where they would go. Our hero said that everything was clear there. Probably he was already worried. At this moment, our hero, having looked at the window, was very puzzled. Noticing that Will was looking very carefully out of the window, Karen asked Lord Will what happened. Then he explained that he thought he saw someone familiar. The next moment, disembarking from the carriage, they saw a huge mansion. Karen told the guys not to be shy and go inside. A maid immediately ran to them, greeting my lady. The maid greeted her lady and said that thank God that the girl was unharmed and then Karen, treating her, was very sorry for making her worry. And the next moment she asked where her father was. And she was informed that as soon as he was informed of Karen's arrival, he immediately rushed over. Now he is waiting for her in the foyer. Karen understood that her daddy was very nervous and she would go to him right away. 
my father was pacing up and down the room, shaking all over with fear. The next moment, the maid was saying that Milady had already arrived. Hearing this, he was beside himself and then opening the door, Karen said that she had returned. Seeing her father, who rushed to her and said that Karen was alive, and he was very worried with tears in his eyes, he greeted his daughter. Karen tried to free herself from his embrace, asking her father to wait. Our heroes, looking at the picture of the reunion, were a little shocked and then seeing their father calm down and talked about whether these were the people who saved his daughter. Pulling himself together, he introduced himself as the owner of the Anaheim Company, Karen's father. He was Victor Anaheim, talking about how they could discuss everything that just happened over a cup of tea. After our heroes told him the story, the man realized that their target was Karen and asked what was about the one who prevented it. A guy who came from a divine height. While drinking a little from his mug, the man asked Will to answer him one important thing. Turning to Will, Karen's father asked if our hero could make him happy with Karen. When Karen heard what her father said, she threw herself into his arms and asked if he was blessing their marriage. The father, seeing his happy daughter, said that of course he blesses this marriage. Karen said that her father was the best in the world, and our hero, looking at the whole picture, did not understand what Mr. Anaheim was talking about. Addressing everyone, Mr. Anaheim said that of course it was hard for him to give his beloved daughter in marriage, but Karen would miss Will very much. Our hero just looked at his reaction and didn't say anything. The next moment Victor turned his attention to Luna Maria, who was sitting next to him. The man was surprised that there was also a priestess with them. Then she asked if he doubted the veracity of their story. He said that they knew that the bigger his business, the more famous their family became. He was still making sure of this after trade negotiations with various people. The man reported that he had heard that Lord Will was a brave man with a strong strong arm and talented magic. Or maybe he and his partner thought it would be more profitable to save her. The priestesses of Mother Earth do not give a chance to believe in their evil intentions, but still the guys were stupid enough to try to deceive the child of the gods, and the very presence of the Holy Virgin, however, most of all believed in the eyes in which his daughter believed. After hearing all this, our hero turned to Mr. Anaheim, but he said that they had to choose the bride's dress. The young man said that it was already too much. Luna Maria decided to dilute the situation and, addressing Mr. Anaheim, said that they had come to this city for only one purpose. When he heard this, he said that it seemed to him that they had already talked about it, remembering about the Holy Sword, turning to Will, and indicating with his hand that they could leave it for the next time, because he was sure that Karen was probably very tired after the road and the guys too. Therefore, they had to listen carefully, addressing their maids, he said that they would give the guests a warm welcome. Six maids appeared in front of the guys, one of them who stood at the head of all, said that there was still time before dinner, so she asked the guys to swim in the hot springs. At the estate, their baths are filled with water from local hot springs, and she assured that the guys would like it. Then Karen, turning to Lord Will and grabbing his hand, said that they could do it together. But the maid immediately adjusted her glasses and looking menacingly at the girl told my lady that she would bathe in another place and Mrs. Lunamaria also with her, talking about how the girl was not ashamed. The next moment, our hero, undressing and coming to the springs, thought that there was a bigger bath in his mother's house, but it was much more luxurious here. The next moment, someone was asking through the door if it was necessary to rub Lord Will's back and the young man said that this was not necessary. Sitting in the tub, he relaxed. Our hero recalled that he had not been in the bath for so long and he was wondering at that moment how his parents lived. Luna Maria and Karen also took a bath, and then Karen, looking at the girl who was trying to wash, being blind, asked if Luna Maria needed help. Luna Maria, getting up from her seat, said that she had seen more than she thought. Besides, she and Lord Will had already bathed together so many times. After hearing this, Karen was very surprised if they had bathed together, saying that she could not believe it in any way. Looking at Luna Maria, Karen thought that the girl was dangerous and she was very interested in what kind of relationship they had with Will. Therefore, turning to Luna Maria, she told the girl that she had a very beautiful figure. Upon hearing this, the girl said that she had never thought about it and asked if it was true. Karen was very surprised by this answer, but she thought that her breasts were bigger, even if she had gained a little lately because of banquets, but she understood that she also had an advantage. The next moment, jumping out of the water, she told Luna Maria that she would not lose, to which the girl did not understand at all what Karen was talking about. Clothes were prepared for all the guests and after dressing royally, our heroes met again with the butler, who asked if they were satisfied with the evening clothes provided. Will said that he was very pleased with beaming and smiling, and Luna Maria, 
who was standing next to him, also reported that she also liked her clothes. Will thought that he was worried, because for some reason Lunamaria was quiet, and the girl said that for her there was no difference between ruins and a mansion. The same with clothes. Our hero, looking at Lunamaria, said that he thought that this dress really suits her and that she looked great. Thus embarrassing the girl, she looked at our hero and thanked him for the compliments. Then Karen suddenly appeared, addressing Lord Will. She was showing and spinning around asking how young her dress was. Looking at Karen, the young man replied that he was very handsome and sweet Karen, understood that it was a great compliment for her. The maids turned to the Lord and Lady Lunamaria asked to go to the dining room, opening the doors to our heroes in a large beautiful hall, in which there was a table on which various dishes were set. Sitting down at the table together, Karen's father asked if they had a good rest. The young man replied that it was so. At this moment, the maid was pushing a chair towards him so that our hero could sit down successfully and asked him to sit down. Karen sat down next to our hero and talked about not being able to dance. The next moment, a maid came up to him, saying that she would pour them drinks now. Seeing her ears, our hero was very surprised and thanked her for it. Looking at his glass, he thought that something was wrong. Karen's father asked if they liked everything. Then he wanted to make a toast, but then suddenly our hero asked to wait, saying that all the wine was poisoned. When Victor heard about the fact that the wine was poisoned, he was very surprised. Karen and all the maids were also shocked, along with Luna Maria, who was sitting at the table. And our hero, looking at his glass, was very determined about what he said. Victor asked if the young man was sure of this and getting up from his chair. The young man said that it was so, and it was without a doubt. At this moment, the entire hall was plunged into silence and everyone just stood silently in a daze. Turning to Lord Will, Karen asked him, and the young man began to tell that he noticed it only because her mother taught her to distinguish his poisons perfectly. The young man began to explain how he understood this and said that the pale turbidity of this wine and its tart aromas conceal notes inviting them to a death sentence. He seemed to know what kind of poison it was. Luna Maria, addressing Willow, asked the young man to pass her cup. Sipping a little, everyone was shocked, and the girl warmed that the taste was tart and sweet. The smell was really a little different from wine. Then, as if paying attention, Luna Maria reported that besides, she and Karen and Mr. Anaheim had the same smell. Then, hearing this, Victor spoke and ordered that everyone check the drinks and no one was allowed to drink anything. Turning to Johan, he immediately began to carry out his master's order. Johan reported that the quality control of food and drinks is impeccable, but if we talk about Lord Will's suspicion, then the poison was spiked here. Hearing this from her father, Karen was very surprised. Then, turning to Lord Will, they told him that it seemed that the young man was saying that this poison was familiar to him. Our hero replied that it was so. This is not just a poison that a simple person can get. Mama Maria said that this is a secret medicine of one people. The goddess of health, Maria from the divine height, understood everything our hero is talking about. She told an old story that he remembered very well and these peoples are a tribe of 1,000 foxes, paying attention to one of the maids, to which our hero immediately drew attention because she stood out from the rest, because she had ears. Point to the maid, who was very shocked that she was found out and was very nervous. Despite our hero, pointing at her, he said that thanks to her ears, he realized that she was from 1,000 foxes. The head maid, addressing the girl, asked if it was true, but the girl said that he would stop talking nonsense, why would she do it? Addressing everyone, she asked if everyone really believed this stranger, because their guest was simply deceiving them. Then Joanne talked about what she could check herself, speaking about the fact that there was poison in this accusation and bringing the girl's drink. She fell then Johan said that his eyes could not be deceived. The next moment, pulling out a knife, the maid wanted to attack Johan, but he did it faster. Falling next to Johan, he picked her up and, addressing everyone, said that when the girl started working for them, turning to the head maid with glasses, who was standing nearby, and the woman explained that six months ago, she was an exemplary maid. Explaining about this maid, the head maid spoke. Karen explained to her father that at the same time, the Gardo company began to work actively, and then, turning to the guards, they said that he had extracted all possible information from this girl. Taking the maid with him, Johan left the hall, our heroes just looked after him. I apologize to the guys. Karen's father said that he asked for forgiveness for such an unpleasant scene. There's nothing to worry about. Thank God that everything ended well, the guys said, looking at him. At that moment, Luna Maria was saying that she wanted to ask one question. After hearing this, Karen's father was very interested in what the girl wanted to ask him. Luna Maria, addressing him, asked what the Gardo company was like. 
Victor said that it was a company in this city, besides their Anaheim. There are other companies. Karen said that this is a border town, so there are a lot of merchants here. My father replied that this was exactly the case and began to tell the story. He said that a year ago one company began to gain momentum and absorb other companies, and this company was called Garda. The trade of this company is unscrupulous and insidious, bad rumors are constantly circulating about it, and when some companies suddenly have problems, Gardo quickly begins to seize them. Due to the fact that this company did not openly do these things, it expanded its influence over the year, and their company on the south side, rallying with other companies, resists it. Now Gardo dominates almost the entire northern part of the city. Karen, appearing on the balcony next to our heroes, informed his father that they would talk about this later. Because the girl spoke and apparently she was sent from Gardo, it seems that her family is being held hostage. She was ordered because of the failure with the abduction. Hearing this, the father said that until today they had no clear evidence, and their hands were tied. This was a chance to stop Gardo's villainy, the father said, and Karen agreed with him. After hearing this, Will said that he also wanted to help Mr. Anaheim, but Lunamaria asked Lord Vilo to forget about it. Victor said that it was the concern of the businessmen of this city, and that the future groom had to entrust this matter to him. Victor reported that their goal was the Holy Sword in the Spirit Forest and Lunamaria said that this was indeed the case, and the Anaheim Company would get them permission to enter this forest, she reported, Karen's former words. Victor said that he himself would like to get an entry permit, but it was problematic. At this moment, Karen was turning to her dear father. Her patience was running out. Looking at the impatient Karen, the father talked about her not being angry because he was joking. Then the girl said that Lord will save them and the father had to keep his jokes to himself. Looking at this skirmish, our heroes did not understand what was happening. The next moment, the father received a slap from his daughter. Victor said that the guys would believe with the permits, everything would be fine. After hearing this, our guys just watched it and then Victor said that, simply put, there was no need for them. The reasons why Anaheim occupies the first positions in this city are timber, there were a lot of forests around, but if they don't poach, admission is free. Victor reported that perhaps Gardo wants to siphon profits from this forest and from the sword, they just accidentally found this sword in their possession. All they need is to brazenly show up there. The guys supported Victor's decision and after seeing this, the man realized how inspired they were, whether they wanted to pull out this sword, asked them. Our hero explained that he did not have a hero's mark, but the girls who were standing not far from him suddenly caught themselves and said that they did not doubt the instructions of the goddess of the earth. Even it was clear to a hedgehog that the young man was a hero and would pull out this sword. Looking at them, the young man realized that apparently their faith in him was unshakable. The young man only laughed. Victor, looking at the young man, thought to himself that he also believed in this son of man brought up by the gods. Answering Lord Will, he asked if Lord Will would go to the forest tomorrow. The young man believed that it would be so. And then Victor said that he should rest for today, and tomorrow morning he would arrange a feast. Taryn, rushing to Will, informed him that she wanted to take the young man to the bedroom. They can wait for the moment when he pulls out the holy sword, but Victor, seeing this, said that the young lady would stay at home, which Karen did not expect from his father at all. The girl asked her father to allow her to sleep with Will, she wanted to give him her warmth. Then at this moment Luna Maria intervened, saying that she forbids the girl to do this, enmity reigned between them again. The girls wanted to solve everything with a game of chess and after playing they both fell asleep in the same bed. And our hero was sitting looking out the window, thinking about his life, realizing what an amazing place it was where he got to. At this moment, the man was talking about how everyone was worthless and turning to Mr. Gordo they wanted to calm him down. But then he asked everyone to be silent. Did they dare to object to him? Because there was one step left. He already had half of the city in his hands. And there was only one step left before the destruction of Anaheim. He planned everything carefully. But they couldn't kidnap Anaheim's daughter, and they couldn't poison this guy either. For the fact that he paid money to such a bodyguard, such a pig like them, a man in a raincoat addressed the owner here, saying that they helped him for the sake of power over this city. Mr. Gardo reported that he knew everything that they would receive their interest when he captured this city. The man reported that he had a backup plan and taking one thing out of the chest. He said that he had acquired this artifact from their people, a titan whistle. The next moment, someone was making his way through the forest, holding a sword in his hands, because a human child had not come to him for a long time. 
Our hero, making his way through the forest with Lunamaria, said that the sun was almost at the zenith. They went out early in the morning, but the holy sword was still not in sight, to which Lunamaria said that he thought they would see him soon. It usually takes trained people half a day to go to that place. Looking around, the young man said that he was in this forest for the first time and hoped that they did not get lost. Then Lunamaria said that on the contrary, the deeper they weighed, the stronger, and they were moving in the right direction, straight to the holy sword. Looking at Marina's moon, the hero realized that she could even feel this. Luna Maria reported that besides, her father was full of secrets. It's hard not to agree how quiet and pleasant it was here, addressing Lord Will. He just laughed and then apologized to the girl. Just when he felt the silence, he remembered Karen. Our hero reported that they spent only a few days with the girl. She was noisy and cheerful from day one. Even inside the carriage, such a chatterbox, in a good way. Our hero was impressed by the girl and even today she was inimitable when he recalled that she wanted to go with them, saying that a lot had happened. But she was so cheerful and Lunamaria said that it would be nice if nothing had happened to them during this time. She was also a little worried and hoped that everything would be fine, and when they returned, they would tell what their amazing journey was, because she also wanted to know about this holy sword. While our heroes were chatting, they did not reach the place where the holy sword was. When Will saw it, he was insanely inspired. When he saw this holy sword, he said that he imagined it. But in real life this ball was so amazing that it brought tears to his eyes. At that moment, the hero greeted them, saying that the young man had an idiotic face, and they saw Levin again. Levin, looking at our heroes, talked about how disrespectful it was to shout someone else's name. It seems that the young man, addressing our hero, Levin said his name was Ellen, to which our hero, having become offended, said that his name was Will. Then I asked what Levin was doing here. Besides, if he was here, then so was Lynx. Thinking about what about the shadow that was behind them belonged to Lynx, and Levin was saying that he was the hero of the sword and he was its rightful owner. He was here alone, and his partners stayed in the city. After hearing this, Lunamaria said that now they needed viewers who increased their authority. Then the young man asked her to be silent in any case. The sword was his, so he told them to get out. Looking at Will, the guy said that there was no need for this holy sword. But our hero reported that although he was not a hero of the sword, but they came here for one purpose. Then Lunamaria asked to wait for Lord Will, saying that she could ask Levin a question. If he came here, then why else was the sword in place? But after all, except for the hero, no one can draw the holy sword. That is, Levin is supposedly the hero of the sword, in fact, just a fake, and it's not all a holy sword. Absorb the aura of the forest for more than ten years, it is possible that the hero of the sword can no longer pull it out. But this does not mean that a hero with other elements will not be able to pull it out. Levin shouted that the guys were wrong and he was the owner of this sword. At the time when Levin was trying to pull out the sword, he just heard the voice of the sword, he said. He heard that the sword was addressing the hero of the sword, saying that he was the rightful owner and was glad to see him. But, unfortunately, now he was not worthy, he still lacked something and he had to find it. When Levin heard this, he did not understand that someone like him was missing something. What the sword was saying and thought that the sword was talking. Our hero heard him. Keep in mind that this is what he said to the hero. His name is the Holy Sword Durandal. He lived in this world for a long time. But this time he has never seen so many people with difficult destinies. Looking at all our heroes, he reported about the hero of the sword, about the priestess, the goddess of the earth, the young man who is blessed by the gods. Levin, looking at our hero, was surprised about what the sword said, thinking that the young man was not so simple. The sword informed them that, however, they could not take it out without the opportunity, and they had to give up this hope. Our hero, addressing the sword, asked him to wait. Apparently he did not think he could pull it out. But when they tell him that he will not be able to pull out the sword, even he will start to get angry. Therefore, jumping on a rock, our hero wanted to try to do it and the sword said that it would not refuse him. The next moment, our hero took up the sword and tried to pull it out. But the sword did not even stagger as if it was rooted in the ground. Addressing our hero, the sword said that it was to no avail, as expected, and that the young man was wasting his time. Levin, watching our hero, said that he had a very funny look, made cool speeches, but in the end he could not do anything. Our hero, enraged, said that he was trying to use the maximum of his strength. The next moment he pulled out the sword right along with the stone. What our hero did not expect at all. Looking at this, everyone did not understand that the young man just did it. He just chipped off a piece of rock along with the sword. Looking at the sword in the rock, our hero thought that it did not work out, perhaps because it was very heavy and Lunamaria said that she probably should have thanked him, 
but the young man said that it was unlikely. At that moment, the sword started talking to our hero again, saying that the young man was the first who could do this, but the young man apologized, saying that it seems he overdid it. The sword said that it was not worth an apology, no one could wield it, but the young man had no other choice. However, he hoped that he had already realized that in order to pull it out, a hero's mark was needed. To which our hero asked why Levin could not, because he was the rightful owner. The sword reported that the hero lacked strength. Besides, the hero Levin never looked into his eyes, constantly running away from danger. Is there a person who will not meet with his spiritual weaknesses that have received him? The hero of the sword will plunge into the darkness of vanity, and thereby doom himself to death. Having heard about mental weakness and Lunamaria could not believe his words and actions. With innate arrogance, he seemed to recall when Will crossed swords with him, she felt the hero's loss. After hearing this, the sword asked if the hero of the sword was actually there. At that moment suddenly something happened and the sword did not have time to finish. Everyone staggered, did not understand what it was and thought that it was an earthquake. But it ended, the sword only remained silent, and then said that they should all be careful, addressing the hero of the sword, the children of the gods and the priestess. Evil has just woken up. A threat is approaching the neighboring city. There was a panic in the city. The message was for everyone from the captain that everyone would immediately need to be evacuated from the eastern part to the central shelter. It was reported that monsters were approaching from the eastern forest. It was announced all over the city. Everyone did not understand why they suddenly attacked the city. After all, a long time ago there was a war between the gods and the demon king. These creatures that attacked the city today were once his henchmen. Looking at the creatures that were approaching the city, the captain persuaded. At that moment, these very creatures were ready to make their way into the city, and then looking at them, the captain thought that they seemed to be 10 meters tall, and besides, not one. The next moment, someone was reporting to the commander that the citizens had been evacuated, and preparations for the battle had been completed. The commander shouted for the archers to be at the ready, the cavalry and infantry had to concentrate, but not approach the walls. The commander commanded everyone that they had to show the pride of the Northwood Guard and protect the city, the commander commanded. The next moment, all the troops were mobilized and ready to fight the monsters that were already advancing towards the gates of the city. The first soldiers who encountered monsters and tried to hold on, but they were very scared. The more experienced ones, who had already dealt with monsters once, tried to save the younger ones. When the next moment, attacking them, one of the soldiers saved the other. Looking at him, the young man asked if he had really been saved, because he had never encountered such monsters. The soldier who saved him asked the young man not to stand in the middle of the field when he sees a monster, he had to attack or run. The enemy was huge, but it was stupid, so it was necessary to keep the distance. The fighters understood that they were on the battlefield. The next moment, the archers were at the ready, and the commander was telling them to aim at the victim. In the next moment, all the arrows flew straight at the monster, but it was useless because they just bounced off it. Looking at this, the commander understood that the monster had a very strong skin, impenetrable. The next moment, he commanded that everyone had to go to cover, seeing that the monsters began to attack, using trees that flew straight towards the wall, and people who were standing right on it. Once in the wall, the tree smashed some part of it, leaving behind a crack. The soldiers who stood in this place and remained alive looked at the crack in the wall. The monsters, meanwhile, did not lose their vigilance and, tearing out trees, continued to attack the wall. Therefore, after seeing this, everyone was ready for this attack. The next moment, the ballista hit the monster right in the arm, thereby stopping his attack and hitting the monster so that he fell and could not move. The commander, seeing that the arrow pierced the monster's arm, understood that this weapon was working. The weapon pierced the giant's skin, so everything was not lost. The commander commanded everyone to quickly assemble ballistas on the eastern wall, because it was easy to hit them with a tree. And the commander was thinking about how much time they could still gain by detaining monsters with a ballista. Here, summoning the high beam, which was supposed to gather into a scorching ball and incinerate them and using a fireball, magic helped people, Looking at this, the commander tried to understand who came to their defense. The next moment, another night girl jumped ahead of the knights and went on the attack, and she also came to the defense of the city, attacking the monsters that were right in front of her. The commander and the swordsman, seeing the girls who stood up for them, asked who they were. After introducing themselves, the girls said that they were the partners of the hero of the sword who voluntarily joined the protective troops. The girls also said that not only they were here, but also adventurers, addressing all the soldiers and trying to cheer them up, they said. Listening to all this, the commander said that it cheered him up. Then the hero of the sword should have been here too, 
but the girls reported that early in the morning he went out for needs and his whereabouts were unknown. The commander wondered why the hero of the sword did not come to the rescue at such an important moment. Putting aside his thoughts, the commander, addressing the soldiers, spoke about how they should unite with the adventurers and protect them, not spare their lives. All the soldiers obeyed the order of their commander. The girls who were defending the city and thought to themselves that Lord Levin could not leave without warning them. At that moment, they called out to him and asked where the hero of the sword was. The hero of the sword at that moment was with Will in the middle of the forest, not far from the city. He and the guys were running away together from the place where the sword was previously stuck in the ground. Will grabbed Lunamaria and ran as fast as he could, and then rushing right after him. The hero of the sword thought that the guy was fast despite the fact that he was holding a girl in his hands. Levin looked at the young man from afar, thinking about it and trying to catch up with our hero, Levin thought. At that moment, Will was running through the forest, ahead, along with Lunamaria. Looking at Will, the girl asked if he was okay. He explained that he was fine, but in any case they had to hurry. Concentrating, Will thought about what he had heard from the sword, which spoke of a threat. The sword also reported that the seal that had been acting on this land by someone had been dispelled. I heard about the seal, the hero of the ball was very surprised. Our heroes listened attentively to the sword and it reported that it was the old days when the gods walked on these lands when there was a war of saints and demons, a fierce battle of light and darkness at the end of which, the gods sealed the demon king at a great price. Only traces of the demon king remained to the active earth, and his minions, the first cyclops giants, were sealed here. At that moment Levin, looking at our hero, asked if maybe it was because the young man wanted to protect the seal. Lunamaria, looking at Will, said that it was very urgent, it was necessary to return. The young man was trying to figure out what he needed to do, looking at the sword in front of him. Will understood that if he were alone, he could fly away. Here the young man turned to Levin, saying that he had a request. Then everyone was talking about how they could not act according to Will's plan and the young man said that the time of trials that his mother spent. He knew what he had to do. At that moment he picked up Lunamaria in his arms. Looking at the actions of our hero, Levin asked if the young man was going to protect her instead of heading to the city and asked if the young man had enough strength. Our hero explained that he had a similar experience, which is more important than that. Turning to Mr. Levin, he asked him not to lag behind. Will, looking at him with a defiant look, said that Levin had asked for it and therefore could try to catch up with him. Seeing this look, Levin was beside himself with rage, and our hero, saying goodbye to him, started from his seat and said that they would see each other soon. Will also asked the sword if it was okay if they left the sword right here. He informed our heroes that everything was fine with him, because he could come back himself. The sword wished them a good road, so our hero, looking ahead and holding Lunamaria in his arms, rushed forward to the city. The city, Karen and the others, the young man, running through the forest, together with the girl, hoped that they were all okay. Victor, being in his house, tried to raise what was wrong. The next moment, sitting down at the table, he suddenly heard some screams, thinking that who would have thought that they could be attacked by giants from legends, also from the eastern forest near his house. Victor understood that it was impossible to stay here for a long time, since this could happen by accident. The flow of his thoughts was interrupted by Johan, who was entering the door and apologizing for disturbing his master. Johan informed Mr. Anaheim that the carriage was ready and from there he had to go to the shelter. Getting up from his seat, Victor said that they had to go. The next moment they were walking down the corridor with the butler and then Victor was interested in where Karen and all the maids were, because the house was very empty. Johan informed his master that Milady was already waiting for him in the carriage, and the maids were already in the shelter. Hearing this, Victor smiled, thinking that everything was fine. While they were walking down the corridor, an obstacle immediately appeared in their path. They saw Karen in front of them, who was taken hostage by a man. Seeing his daughter, Victor did not expect this and wanted to rush to her, but then the opponent told the man not to move. After all, one more move and his daughter will come to an end. At this moment, he was gripping the sword tightly in his hand, pointing it straight at Karen's throat, which forced both men to stay in their place so that the girl would not get hurt. Karen at that moment could only utter words of apology, addressing her father with tears in her eyes. Victor understood that the only way out was to raise his hands, so saying that he was giving up, he asked his opponent what conditions he would have. But the first thing Victor reported was that first they had to let his daughter go, turning to a servant of the Gardo company. At that moment, he looked at Johan, who was standing nearby, and the man said that he did not understand that it would be necessary to go with him. This is the condition that must be fulfilled. Holding his daughter in his hands, he talked about and apologized that because of her, this boy, 
who was our hero, had to sort out a lot of problems. Therefore, Karen will also take along with her, just like that his daughter could not leave, the man said. The next moment, when he tried to close her mouth, Karen took advantage of the moment to bite him. After that, the man tried to get rid of her and pushed Karen away. Then at that moment Victor realized that it was necessary to save his daughter. Turning to Johan, they decided to make an attempt to retreat. He drew his sword and began to attack the opponents. The next moment, a battle broke out and Johan tried to fight with his opponents. Realizing that they had failed, Johan apologized to his master. At that moment, right in front of them, Karen was lying on the ground, and a man was holding her. A man with a katana stood next to them, saying that this butler knows a lot, but with this decorative sword that he held in his hands, the conversation will not go. The man looked at the saber held by the butler, realizing that it was nothing compared to his weapon. At that moment, the man who was holding Karen thought that he had been saved, and addressing him, the swordsman with a katana said that this slug could not even use a hostage. Looking at the man, he said, the next moment the man apologized, looking at his savior, because he was not such a skilled fighter. Addressing Mr. Victor, the man himself did not say that he was not like the one who held his daughter. If necessary, this katana will leave him without a head in an instant, and he reported, because the blade was from an overseas alloy. Paying attention to his weapon, the stranger spoke. Victor understood all this and carefully examined his opponent. Turning to Johan, Victor asked about what was the chance of saving Karen and Johan. Looking at the two that were right in front of him, he realized that to be honest, he did not know, because this man has simply amazing abilities. But if he manages to find the slightest weakness, he will have time to exchange their lives with my lady. The butler informed his master, assessing the situation. Victor apologized to Ihun and said that if it got worse, then he had to leave him and save only Karen. Johan obeyed his master. The next moment, Victor reported that he was ready to go to Gardo, stepping forward to his opponents. After leaving the house, Karen was thrown into a carriage, and Victor shouted that the man did not touch his daughter and did not treat her like that. To which the man asked him to shut up and move, ask about what they were supposed to do with Victor now. The butler was also with them and was sure that they needed to be put in the carriage, and where was the maid who was with the girl. But before that, so that he did not throw out any trick, he was hit and unfortunately the local Mr. Shumi of recent events went missing, so he had to sit down soon. They returned, and the next moment, after stuffing everyone into the carriage, they set off on their way. At this moment, one of the maids who managed to escape was watching her lady from behind a tree. Victor, addressing the stranger, wanted to ask, The Gardo company acted quickly in all this hype. It's because she knew about the attack. And he asked if it was their handiwork. But the man said that he was only a mercenary. He could find out about it from Mr. Gardo. Karen, who was sitting with her father, was only silent. Both of them were tied up and turning to her daughter, Victor asked if she was safe apologizing to his daughter for the fact that it was his fault that he didn't keep up. The girl reported that everything was fine, trying to calm her father, believing that they would cope with everything as before. Her father had not expected such courage from Karen, and at that moment he remembered Luna Maria and Will, who had been visiting them recently. Thinking that Karen really believed in them so much, then he decided that he, too, would believe that the guys would be able to cope completely. Karen squeezed her eyes shut and tried her best to believe that the guys would be able to save them. At this moment, our heroes were making their way through the forest, Will stopped and looked ahead of him. Luna Maria thought about what had happened, turning to the young man. Then it seemed to Will that someone was calling him. At that moment, Levin, who was chasing our hero, was holding onto a tree that stood next to him. Out of breath, he thought about what had happened, turning to Will whether he was exhausted or not. Seeing Levin, who was walking nearby, Will said that the only one who was exhausted here was him, to which the young man tried to answer that he was fine, throwing his fists at our hero. Will reported that they had to hurry, he had a bad feeling. They were just a little bit away from the city, where a fierce battle was going on at that moment. Victor and Karen rode tied up in a carriage, and there was a battle going on in the city, and our heroes tried to arrive in time and save everyone. At that moment, the Cyclopes ran straight to the walls of the city, seeing his knights understood that they had to resist the one who wanted to commit a tyrant. Therefore, loading their guns faster, they had to prepare Ballisti. Seeing the monster that was right in front of them, they understood that this was their chance and all rushed forward at the monster, trying to overcome it. The next moment, when the monster fell, Everyone understood that they had to finish him off and by dealing with one, they realized that another monster was in their piggy bank. The next moment the monsters got up and the guys fell off it. Then the girls and the rest of the swordsmen said that they should drive them away from the wounded and should look where they were shooting. 
At that moment, the ballisti were hitting the monsters again, and the wounded soldiers were going to the shelter. Having come to the places where they tried to heal the wounded, another wounded man arrived in time. Everyone was talking about everyone taking care of this person. Then seeing him, those who took the wounded asked to put the man there, but at such a pace they were afraid that they could not cope, because there were a lot of wounded and each time they only added. The heroes fought and everyone fought. Looking at this, the commander understood that somehow they managed to keep the balance, thanks to the adventurers, but every second more and more people are dying, and the giants one by one continue to appear, replacing those they killed. At this rate, they will be crushed, and the city will be destroyed, the commander thought, looking at the whole situation that was unfolding right in front of him. The next moment one of the monsters tried to break through the wall, and then all the heroes tried to save the city by attacking the monster to right in front of them. One of the adventurers was caught, and the monster dragged her right to his mouth, then everyone else wanted to save her, but they might not have time. Then Will suddenly appeared along with the hero Levin. Together they saved the girl and cut off the giant's head and arm. Seeing this, the commander thought that these two had cut the giant so easily, so who were they? Everyone else was chanting the hero's name. Looking at the two young men, everyone was trying to figure out which one of them was the hero of the sword. That attractive man with shiny golden hair and a contemptuous look addressing everyone, the commander thought. When one of the adventurers saw the hero of the ball, saying that she was Amy and would be happy to help him, she ran away directly from the commander. The commander is alive, at this moment, looking at Will, he thought that he took this young man for a sword hero because of his ability to wield a sword. Who is he, since he can be on the same level with the hero, the man thought to himself. At that moment, Levin, looking at the corpse of the monster that lay in front of him, thought that he had managed to cut off only his left arm, and will easily pass the sword over the thick neck of the giant. Then Willa shouted, saying that they should have come back much earlier. It's good that the wall hasn't been destroyed yet. These monsters have been known since the time of the War of Gods and Demons, the Cyclops military core sacred chaos and destruction in the name of the Demon King. At this moment, the girls rushed to the hero, seeing their heroes asked why they were here and they informed the young man that they decided that he would come here soon. Carol was also here, she was somewhere engaged in treatment, they reported. When Will saw the girls, he realized that it was his personal squad with whom he was traveling. Then one of them asked where my lord was, turning to Levin. Levin reported that there was no emergency now, and the girl had to speak quickly on the case and then she decided to tell them what had happened. Amy reported that the city was suddenly attacked by giants, with whom the city's guards are now fighting. In the beginning, the advantage was on their side, but the number of giants coming out of the forest began to increase, as well as the number of wounded. The situation is gradually getting out of control, the girl reported. Levin, hearing all this, reported that he understood everything and swore by the power of the hero of the sword, because he would destroy these monocular monsters. Will, having heard this, said that he would also help and it was necessary to quickly deal with all this. The next moment, Lunamaria asked them to stop. When our hero saw Lunamaria, he asked if something had happened. She said that something was bothering her, because why did the giants decide to attack the city right now? Levin reported that if there was a hidden meaning in this, how did he know it? Because wasn't it an accident? Lunamaria reported that there were no giants in the usual attack, but they did not know that it was caused by someone removing the seal. They didn't even know who this someone was. The other day people hired by the Gardo company tried to kill the owner in the Anaheim company. But fortunately their plan failed, Lunamaria reported. The girls, hearing this, were surprised. Did they really want to kill the owners of the largest company in this city? And Levin said that it was a very interesting fairy tale. That is, they decided to let the giants go to Anaheim. At the same time, having destroyed the whole city, the hero of the sword reported and laughed at what Lunamaria was trying to convey to them. And then, turning to Lunamaria, they asked her if it was possible that all this was for the sake of a diversion. Our hero understood that he sensed something was wrong when they returned because Karen was in danger and possibly. At that moment, the heroes of the sword said that if they weren't so worried about it, they should have checked it themselves. After hearing what Levin was talking about, our hero turned to him, then he said that he would not misunderstand him here. He simply did not believe in their story, but that doesn't mean he didn't care if they were here or not. At that moment, Lunamaria was saying that they just had to leave him, because they had to go. Amy grabbed Lunamaria's hand. Speaking of the fact that the girl was a priestess, was it true? Then the girl should be able to treat people and she had to stay here for the wounded, because they needed help. Will, addressing Lunamaria, 
also asked her to stay because people needed her healing power. Turning to Levin, our hero asked to look after her. He asked to whom the young man leaves her. He was quiet enough here because his name is Heroes Levin. Addressing the big guys, he said that if they wanted to become a speck of rust on his sword, then they had to come here. He was at the hero of the sword, talking and thinking to himself that he would not lose to Will either. Upon seeing the sword hero, everyone chanted his name. All the girls were happy to see the young man fighting. After seeing him, all the men talked about him being the best swordsman in the country. What an encouraging reinforcement. At that moment, monsters were just hitting them and everyone understood that they had to follow the heroes to kill all the giants. The commander, seeing the enthusiasm in the eyes of the soldiers, understood that it was a strong confidence. Everyone's morale had already risen. At that moment our hero jumped on the wall right in front of the commander and when he saw him, he did not understand how the guy jumped to the wall. And the next moment, when he came to, he asked who the young man was. Our hero just managed to catch a glimpse of him. Then suddenly the commander was called, and the young man, jumping from the wall, thought about what it meant that the one responsible for all this something happened. It was this guy. Our hero apologized to the commander for scaring him. He also wanted to help protect the city. But for some reason he needed to move away for a while. Our hero reported that he would return from this, asked to follow everything and saying that it was his duty. The next moment, saying goodbye to the soldiers, our hero jumped off the wall, to which those surprised, looking at the young man, did not understand whether he could really jump off such a wall and stay alive. Will ran down the street thinking that he didn't feel anyone in this neighborhood was everyone evacuated, running to the house where Karen was earlier. He knocked on the door saying that he returned and reported that it was thrown open the door. But when he opened the door, he shouted to Karen and Mr. Victor, but no one answered him. Realizing that there was no response, the young man thought that perhaps his friends were in danger. And then a maid entered the door, seeing Lord Will, she rushed to him. Seeing her, the young man realized that something had happened. The girl only looked at our hero with a frightened face. Then turning to her he asked why she stayed and what she was so afraid of. The next moment, the maid blurted out that the young man saved those for whom she was praying, and she was talking about Lady Karen and the master. When he heard this, our hero asked what had happened to them and the maid replied that they had been kidnapped now. Such men would be with the order of the Gardo company. Immediately after Will left the mansion, the alarm was announced about the attack of monsters. The master ordered them all to evacuate to the shelter, but she became worried about the safety of my lady and returned. Then she saw them tied up and loaded into a carriage. The girl was terribly angry with herself for leaving Lady Karen and the gentleman in danger. She couldn't do anything just stood in the shadows and trembled with fear, saying that she was completely useless. Hearing her torment, our hero stroked the girl on the head, saying that it was not so at all. Thanks to her, he now knew what he could do. The maid, hearing this, took heart and turned to Lord Will with tears in her eyes. He, smiling at the girl, told her to trust him, because he would save them. Then the young man was interested in whether there were any features of the carriage on which they left and the girl knew where the Garda company was located. The maid informed Will about everything she knew, because she could bring a map of the city, and the next moment our thought about Karen, asking the Almighty that she was okay, because he was soon to come and save her. At that moment, Lynx was running through the city, trying to find the hero of Lord Levin, looking into every building, she thought whether he was in this building or not. Wandering along the street, she realized that there was no Lord anywhere, could he really be on the eastern part or somewhere outside the city all alone? Lynx was very sad, because she remembered them during the leading trips, if you remember the moment they arrived. The young man always had such a thoughtful expression, thinking about where Levin had gone. While Lynx was walking, she did not pay any attention and did not hear anything around her. At that moment a carriage passed by her, that she had to jump away, and she hit the wall. Watching the carriage pass by, she tried to touch her back, which hurt very much, thinking that it was very dangerous and trying to figure out where this carriage was rushing to. It was the same carriage in which Karen and Mr. Victor were traveling. When they reached their destination, they were ordered to get out of the carriage. Our heroes, getting out of the carriage, stepped onto the threshold of the Gardo company, and bursting in. The man who accompanied them told Mr. Gardo that they had brought Anaheim. At that moment, Victor and Karen entered the building. Seeing Victor and Karen, the man who was sitting in the chair with a glass of wine, said that they finally appeared here, because they made him sweat, addressing Mr. Anaheim, he said. Mr. Anaheim didn't understand at all what was going on. Then the man who was sitting in the chair said that he had no reason to worry. Mr. Gardo was in front of him. The man who brought them, seeing Mr. Victor's reaction, 
kicked him and then Mr. Victor fell to the floor. At this moment, the man reported that he had to kneel right in front of him. Mr. Gardo, approaching him, said that he would like to show Victor who is the owner of this city. Stepping on Karen's father's head, Gardo wanted to show all his might. After seeing this, Karen could not accept how her father was being humiliated. Then the man standing behind her asked the girl to be quiet. Gardo asked how it was for Anaheim, if he liked being pinned to the ground by someone like him. Victor reported that it was disgusting to him, but in general he didn't care, saying that Gardo understood at least what situation they were in, because they were trying to capture the city. Then Gardo, lifting Karen's father by the hair, asked if by chance he was not hinting at giants here. Grinning, I ask him Gardo, everyone just carefully watched Victor's reaction. Victor, having heard this, understood what it meant that everything that was happening was Gardo's handiwork. Then he was shouting at the whole hall, saying that Victor had been thinking for a very long time. Because it was his handiwork that was it. The one who awakened these monsters was none other than the great Gardo-sama, he reported. Victor asked if Gardo thought that he had done anything at all, if the monsters destroyed the walls and broke inside. The city would suffer huge losses. Victor, addressing Gardo, asked if he really wanted to destroy the city in which his property is located. He had already asked about what Gardo was trying to achieve in general. After hearing this question, Gardo said that everything was very obvious. He wanted to make this city his own. The next moment, throwing Victor away, he said that Victor was right. When the giants burst into the city, they would carry with them one destruction but only with themselves, so if they, in theory, would only pass through half of the city. Victor, looking at Gardo, who was standing in front of him, asked if he controlled these monsters. Then he reported that they were an army and monsters subordinate only to the winner of demons. The power of power over them is not intended for people and said that Gardo would not be forgiven, asking about what he had already done. Show Victor the artifact, which is called the Flute of Monsters. After seeing the artifact, both Karen and Victor understood what was the matter. Cardo reported that he had to dump a lot of gold for this, but the result spoke for itself. As long as he had this flute, these monsters would obey her. When the city walls are destroyed, these same monsters will wipe everything off the face of the earth, all the districts of Victor, and then such a misfortune will reach, and a lot of money will be needed to restore. Then the Gardo company will come on the scene and provide all the necessary funds for this, explaining that when the city takes their money, they will be grateful to him for the rest of their lives. He uses this to advantage to expand his business and one day will become the richest merchant in the world. Gardo informed Victor, who talked about what a fool this man was, addressing Gardo. Gardo looked at Anaheim, said that the fool was here, only he was a beaten prisoner, and that Anaheim had to put up with it. Finally, after all, their small town and one leading company is enough for them. Therefore, it will be necessary to eliminate rivals, Gardo reported, referring to Victor, who was nearby. The next moment, addressing Victor, Gardo asked him not to worry about this situation, informing him that he would not kill him now. You have to do everything with taste, Gardo said, looking at Victor, who was sitting right in front of him. Victor the attentive tried to observe Gardo and what he was saying. The next moment, Victor, who had been sitting on a chair recently, fell. When Karen saw her father fall, she wanted to rush to him. Then the man who was holding her said that she should stop screaming and crying already, because she had to sit quietly. Karen had to watch while they treated her father properly, one of the men said, and also informed her that the girl would not try to bite him again. Looking at the fallen Victor, Gardo said that Victor would not get off with an easy death, referring to Anaheim. Then suddenly Victor started coughing. Looking at his father, Karen could not come to her senses. Then the men who held her asked what had to be done with the girl. Gardo informed the mercenaries that the men could do whatever they wanted with her. After thinking a little, Gardo decided that this was not enough and therefore reported that it would be better for men if they did all this in front of Mr. Anaheim. Then, hearing what Mr. Gardo was saying, Karen couldn't stand it and started calling Will with all her might. At the moment when Karen desperately called Will, desperate from the situation in which they found themselves with their father, the next moment, the young man, as if at her call, jumped into the window of the building where Karen and her father were being held hostage by hooligans from the Gardo company. Seeing the young man who broke into his door so easily, Gardo did not understand who broke into them. Will, landing right in front of him, apologized to Karen for not showing up for so long. Seeing his girlfriend, her spirit soared, realizing that in front of her was her hero, who again came to her aid. Will has been looking for Karen and Victor for a very long time. The young man ran around the city, inspecting buildings that somehow fit the description of the maid from Karen's house. He tried to figure out where they were taken, continuing to inspect the city from building to building. 
remembering the conversation with the maid, who had previously explained to him that most likely Karen and Victor were taken to the company's Gardo base. The maid informed Will that she had a couple of places in mind, but after looking at these places, our hero realized that they did not fit. The guy understood that time was running out and he needed to find Victor and Karen as soon as possible, before something irreparable happened. These thoughts occupied him all the time while he was frantically searching for the building. The next moment, while our hero was exploring the city looking down from the roof of the building, he saw a familiar face, namely Lynx, who was walking along the road and desperately calling for her master. When our hero saw the Lynx and went down to her, and when he saw Will, she was very surprised. The young man reported that they had not seen each other for a very long time. Lynx was talking about how they met earlier than she expected. Lynx also, looking at our hero, reported that because of Levin, their paths diverged. Our hero, as if agreeing with her, said that really Lynx had not met him. Will was told by Lynx that he had seen him some time ago, because Levin, being a hero, protects the eastern wall from the attack of monsters, our hero reported, seeing the upset girl. After hearing such news from Willisama, Lynx became more inspired, saying that Levin was very brave. The young man always meets enemies face to face. Addressing the Lynx, Will said that he wanted to ask something. Lynx, looking attentively at our hero and getting excited, asked what was the matter. Our hero explained the whole situation that happened after their parting in the forest. Hearing this, Lynx asked what kind of cart our hero was looking for, and said that she had only seen one. Lynx explained that the cart she noticed was going down the road very quickly and pointing her finger in the direction where the cart crumpled. Our hero fixed his gaze behind her finger. After hearing this and what Link said, our hero asked if she was sure, shaking the girl by the shoulders. She replied that it was so. Thanking the Lynx, our hero said that they could still talk when they met, and now he had to leave urgently. Looking after the young man, Lynx thought that the young man runs very fast. The next moment, when she was looking ahead, the guy had already disappeared from her sight. Looking in the other direction, Lynx realized that the sounds of battle were coming from the east and she had to go straight there to Levin Sama, as Will had said earlier. After listening to the Lynx, our hero managed to get to the place he needed in time. When he appeared, seeing him, Karen was insanely happy with the young man. Tears of happiness appeared in her eyes, and the girl herself blushed. Gardo asked who our hero was and asked to name him, saying that he was a scoundrel. Then one of the members of the Gardo gang, pointing at our hero with his finger, said that it was the same guy who intervened when they kidnapped the girl of Anaheim, pointing his finger at the young man. Karen, addressing Will, explained that everything was bad with her father and seeing Mr. Victor, our hero realized that things were really very bad. Looking in the direction of Mr. Anaheim, our hero noticed that the man was lying on the floor, not moving and he was bleeding from his mouth. At that moment, everyone felt the strength and tremendous pressure looking at the young man. Gardo was trying to figure out if it was coming from the boy who was right in front of them. Looking at the young man, everyone understood that it was a mistake to consider him a weak fool. And then the man who was with the unusual katana said that he felt from here the thirst for the blood of our hero and also that he would be his opponent. Looking at his opponent, our hero drew attention to his katana, because it was the same as Ronan's father. At this moment, the man who stood nearby was talking about the young man getting ready and taking out a katana from its sheath, began to attack our hero. At first, Will managed to dodge the stranger's blows, but he, in a rage, still continued to attack the young man, striking him more and more blows, trying to get to Will himself. Will only dodged his attacks, trying not to enter the fight in full force. The next moment, he realized that, dodging one of them, jumping away from his opponent's katana. Standing directly on the katana, she cut Will's shoe. But jumping back, the young man realized that he himself was not injured. His opponent, looking at our hero, thought that the young man seriously underestimated him and informed him about it. Because the young man, in his opinion, did not even get a weapon. The man admitted that the young man was quite agile and so deftly dodged the blow, and he was impressed. But dexterity alone was not enough to win, he reported. At this moment, he was making a lunge towards our hero. Moving from his place towards our hero, the enemy's attack was so fast that Will, with all his training from the magician and other gods, did not have time to react. The next moment, when the young man looked forward to where the man had been standing earlier, the katana flashed right in front of his face. 